Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so today we are gonna see, what if Naruto shows his true chakra control team 7 bashing, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. It had been another day of training for Yuzumaki Naruto. Heh. Training's what he calls it when Kakashi finally showed up, with another one of those idiotic excuses, after that it had been another one of those teamwork exercises and to round it all off another lecture about the importance of chakra control. And once again Kakashi had been only looking in his direction when he did. He was getting sick and tired of it. In Wave Country he had witnessed Sasuke's chakra control during that tree climbing exercise, so he knew he wasn't much better than his own. Still, the Ichiha got nothing but praise from their sensei. He passed Ichiraku Raymond and ordered his Maizo Raymond to go. After paying he took his cup to the Hokage Monument. Sitting down in the lotus position with the cup in the middle of his lap, he started meditating for a couple of minutes. Slowly he reached a certain peace of mind. He enjoyed the silence in his head for a couple of minutes, breathing in the steam of his ramen. Then he started analyzing his problem, picking it apart piece by piece. He was tired of the lectures on chakra control, and never hearing Kakashi complain about anyone else. He was tired of being told to look up at Sasuke, and to try and be more like that stiff-headed and spoiled brat of an Ichiha. The only solution to the problem he saw was to get better than him. Not just a little better, a lot. He would have to beat him with a mile before anyone would recognize him for it. But who could teach him? Not Kakashi for sure, he didn't want him to know about this training. Maybe Aruka would know a thing or two. He remembers his former teacher to have given a few lessons about it. Unfortunately, he had dozed off during those hours. I'll make sure not to do that this time with a renewed spirit. He opened his eyes and started eating his barely warm ramen. Aruka had just finished teaching class when Naruto ran into him at the entrance of the Ninja Academy. Ichi greeted his former student with a smile. Anosa, Anosa, Aruka sensei, I need a favor. Hello, Naruto. What can I do for you? You remember those lessons about chakra control, hi. What about it? Well, I decided to start taking that seriously, but the blonde genin scratched the back of his head. I forgot the technique you taught us to practice. It the elder laughed a little as Naruto finished his sentence. Haha, <laughs> guess I should have woken you before I started to practice it. It's alright, I'll show you Aruka jumped up and picked a leaf of the nearest tree and placed it on his forehead. The trick is to release just enough chakra from your forehead to make the leaf float above it. Not enough, and it won't move or fall back on your head. Do much and it will shoot of your head, and you won't be able to control it as Aruka finished his explanation. He concentrated and made the leaf float a few inches above his head. Now you try it. He picked the leaf out of the air and handed it to Naruto. Naruto pushed his head protector a little more up his head and placed the leaf on his forehead. He concentrated his chakra to his forehead, and when he released it, the leaf shot up like a rocket. After about a yard, the wind picked it up. Haruka snatched it and handed it back to Naruto. He, just as I thought. You obviously use way too much chakra. That's okay, just keep practicing. I'm sorry, but I've got some tests to correct. Good luck on the training Naruto he waits up they look back at Naruto. What is it how long does it normally take to master this technique oh, it shouldn't take you longer than a few days, a week tops as it's a basic technique okay, thanks Aruka sensei. Naruto had been training his chakra control for three days now. Mostly in his apartment as there wasn't any wind there and he could quickly grab the leaf as it flew out of his control. He had improved greatly and could finally hover the leaf above his head but he still found himself lacking a great deal of control. The leaf now hovered about 15 inches from his head, which was fine inside his room, but outside the wind would still get a hold of it. Another two days later, he had finally mastered the technique, and he found his chakra control had clearly improved. His other techniques seemed to have become less taxing, and he could make more shadow clones with the same amount of chakra. An idea popped in his head as he thought about this. Cage bunch and no jutsu, a clone appeared, holding his own leaf in his hands. Both Naruto's pulled their head back and placed the leaf on their foreheads. The leaves once again flew high above their heads, but he managed to keep them steady nonetheless. Wow, this is more difficult than I imagined. But it's a good training nonetheless. A few hours later, Naruto managed to regain some more control. Exhausted, but satisfied, he fell down on the bed and decided to use this exercise on a daily basis. Four days later, seven more clones had joined in on his little exercise. He was feeling more confident in his newfound control. It had already paid itself off. There was nothing like an army of clones to help out harvesting crops or babysit a small bunch of kids. A and D, although he hadn't said anything, he was sure Kakashi had noticed something. He found a time to move on. He had already tried combining the exercise with tree climbing, but stopped trying since he kept hitting his head on the ground. He needed something new. Something bigger. Aruka was out of town this week, as he had gotten a mission to Hidden Grass Village. He decided to head for the town library. 
he never imagined the library to be so huge. Racks as high as the ceiling were stacked with scrolls. The problem wasn't finding something interesting to learn, there must have been thousands to choose from. The problem was that he didn't know which one would serve his purpose. He had tried talking to the cleric, only to turn the cold shoulder. What the hell is it with these people that they hate me so much? I bet they wouldn't act like this to their precious Achehan idea struck his mind. He looked for a quiet place near the entrance and created a clone. The clone immediately performed a hinge, and before Naruto now stood the Achiha he had grown to despise so much. Oi dope. You got the scroll don't call me that, you idiot, so you got the scroll Goman, couldn't find it. The clone gave a look of annoyance and walked towards the cleric, who had noticed the conversation of the two. Naruto soon followed. As the clone Sasuke reached the cleric he asked him for a technique that would improve their chakra control. I've got just the technique for you Uchiha-san. However, it might be a bit too much for your teammate here I ask you for your advice and a technique, not to insult my teammate of course, sir. You might find the water walking appropriate. You can find it in the water department, first rack on your right, third shelf arigato. Naruto and his clone walked over to the scroll and studied it for a few minutes. This should be easy, plus the worst thing that could happen is to get some wet clothes after placing the scroll back and leaving the library. Naruto dispelled his clone and headed for the river. Hehecha, <laughs> you've finally proved some use. Naruto had followed the river for a good end until he finally found a spot where the water was calmer and shallow enough to his liking. He stood there silently for a moment, studying the gentle flow of the liquid surface. Then he calmly rolled up his pants until he had uncovered his knees. His control might have improved over the last week, but he wasn't foolish enough to think he would succeed on the first try. It had taken him a week to gain enough control to walk up a tree, and this wasn't simply sticking to a surface, this was creating a stable surface to walk on. Well, at least this time, the chance of hitting my head to the ground will be minimal. But that thought he began channeling his chakra to his feet. He hovered one foot over the water, and immediately violent wrinkles started disturbing the calm surface. Wow, that can't be good. Um, must be overdoing it again he lessened the amount of chakra, and instantly the water stopped its wild flow. Putting his foot down on it, he broke the still surface, and felt his foot hitting the riverbed. This might be trickier than I thought. Several hours had gone by, and Naruto was steadily finding his way towards the surface of the water. Since the water was shallow enough to stand in, he figured he could work his way up, so he wouldn't have to get in and out of the water all the time. He was meditating, forgetting about the outside world, trying to find peace with himself, letting go of all conflict, feeling the water at his legs, flowing through his toes, he tried to become one with it. And slowly he managed to slightly control his altitude. Time does not matter, only with patience will I achieve my goal. Repeating. This thought for an indeterminable time he finally reached the surface. The water now carried him like the earth had before. Slowly he opened one eye, as if when he would look he would ruin the magic. When he saw his feet were no longer underwater he couldn't but jump and shout over his victory. Upon landing, he immediately fell through the water and fell ungracefully on his ass. His face still held a grin to them though, if he could do it once, he could do it again, right? Fifteen minutes later he had reached the flowing surface once again. This time deciding to hold himself still for a couple of minutes until he had calibrated his chakra some more. Then he slowly tried lifting his foot, seeing if he had to readjust his chakra flow if he did. Luckily he didn't have to. Grateful and relieved he started walking around slowly. It was not long before he felt confident in his newfound skill and started playing around with it. He had spent about 15 minutes skating across the river. When his stomach began to growl he decided to head for Ichiraku, he was tempted to run to the center of the village across the water, but decided not since he wanted to keep his extra training secret. As he reached the village he could not help but notice the cold stares. You always have hated me, you have always detested me, but now at least I know why you do. I know you all have suffered more than I can imagine. That's what I felt when I thought Sasuke had died on the bridge. It could not come close to what some of you have had to endure. But why can't you understand that I am not him thoughts went through his head as he ran further down the village. He felt the cold stares following him everywhere he turned, their icy gazes peering into his back, hate burning in their eyes. He had learned to cope with them, but he still wished that for just once he could walk around without all the hate pointed towards him. He rounded the last corner for the Ichiraku stand. Immediately he was pushed away by a horde of crazy fangirls, screaming the name of his rival. His muscles tensed when he heard the name. He turned his head towards the goal of the wild horde, just in time to see his teammate run off. Hell you Uchiha, you spoiled bloodline brat. Soon I will surpass you, and when that day comes we'll see how much they love their dear Uchiha. He clenched his fist hard enough for his muscles to shake his arm and let out a growl. He tried shaking it off as he continued to one of the few places in the village where his company was welcomed. Boy Naruto. Where were you man, I was expecting you three hours ago sorry Ichira-san, I was training by the river. 
Guess I got a little carried away haha, <laughs> when don't you get carried away. Anyway, what can I get you well I do feel like chicken tonight one chicken Raymond coming right, up dot the old man smiled and turned to the pot of boiling water dot hey. Bitchy, can I ask you something odd haven't heard much else from you kid. What's on your mind well, it's kinda hard to find the right words, it's the blonde paused for a long time dot kid, why don't you just mindlessly blurt it out like you seem to do everything else hey Chira just grinded at the boy and gave him a wink. He put the bowl of Raymond on the counter and leaned a little closer dot look. Naruto. You've been a customer longer than I can remember and I doubt that your question would stop me from welcoming you here. So if you've got something on your mind just speak up and I'll see what I can do for you the blonde smiled when he heard those words. He stared into his Raymond bowl for a few seconds, pondering over his old friend's words. Promise. Naruto looked at Chira deeply in his eyes and saw nothing but honesty when the man answered, on the face of the fourth, holding his hand to his chest and pointing towards the hokage, monument.The young genin smiled again, then he took in a deep breath of air to build up his courage. Do you know why the people of the village hate me? Chira sighed and looked down. His face showed shame and disappointment. Hi, but unless you want my head chopped off and put on a pike, I can't tell you why Naruto, however, didn't look sad or disappointed. He knew why, ever since he graduated from the academy. He remembered that day like it was yesterday, as it was one of the happiest of his life. Finally, he had figured out where all that hate came from, and those whiskers. It also had been the first time that someone had stood up and vouched for him. Hiruka had saved his life in more ways than one. Thanks, he said, then turning his head back to his Raymond, indicating he didn't want to discuss it any further. After finishing his meal, he had returned to his house as it was getting late. He had been training, so he wanted to get some rest. On the way he almost ran into his raven-haired teammate.But as the two's eyes met however, a multitude of girls' screams filled the air. Naruto witnessed his rival's appear and suddenly exchanged for a log of wood, right before being jumped by six girls. As he looked at the faces of the adults who were nearby the event he saw nothing but smiles on their faces. Smiles that rapidly turned to sour disgust, as they saw him standing there. Angry he took to the rooftops to escape their stares. No matter what I do or how good I become, they'll never recognize me for what I am. I'll never be given the instant respect that they grant their precious Achiha. He spat out the last two words. When he arrived at his apartment he was too angry and pumped up from jumping houses and thinking about his teammate. Normally, he would calm his temper by meditating on the ceiling, today however he just didn't feel like it. So, he summoned up a cage bunshin and made it perform a hinge, making it look like Sasuke. You think you're so big. Everybody thinks you're so great. And no matter what I do that you will probably never change. You'll always be their Ichiha prodigy, and I'll never be anything but a demon in their eyes he just stared at the clone, then in an instant Naruto had plunged his fist in the clone's face. When the smoke cleared however, it was not the orange-clad, golden-haired genin who stood there. It was his darker. Onyx-eyed teammate that was standing in his room. So be it. They like their Ichiha so much, I'll give them all the Ichiha they want. Naruto had awoken early that day. There would be a lot to do and little time to do it. After finishing his breakfast, he headed for the library and checked out a book on fire. He also wrote a book about the most prominent clans in Konoha. After that, he headed towards the Ichiha mansion and spied on his teammate for a few hours. Ichi had changed his appearance to one of the girls that jumped him the other day and hid somewhere out of sight. Figuring Sasuke would discard him as more of an annoyance than a threat, should he spot him. Naruto was taking notes on the Ichiha's movements, analyzing his teammate as he was practicing against the dummies in the courtyard. After an hour he began seeing through the motions and started to see some logic behind his movements. But then it seemed that the show was over as Sasuke went back indoors. He looked at his watch and noticed he had to leave as training would start soon anyway. He remarked to himself, remembering his sensei's habit of unpunctuality. The man was even late when they received missions for God's sake. Naruto cursed him for it, then more than usual, as they had to make up for it by working harder and or longer, as the result of the hours of wasted time. Ah well, at least nobody will ever trick me into not eating breakfast, again he came out of his hiding place and started reading up on some of the fire. As he flipped through the pages he noticed that the techniques depended little on precise chakra control. He cursed himself that he had never started learning them sooner. They seemed rather basic, and a lot of them weren't nearly as complicated as he had thought them to be. Before arriving at the bridge he put the book back in his backpack. Sakura and Sasuke had already arrived at the bridge and were standing in their usual positions. For Sakura, that position is in a five-yard radius near Sasuke, desperately trying to make some way of conversation. Naruto casually greeted them and took a seat on the railing. He plugged in his left earphone and put on some music. Over the last few weeks Naruto had grown extremely quiet during these waiting periods, compared to his usual loud self. Both his teammates found themselves happy with this change of behavior. 
Sakura was especially pleased with this change of events, as she was tired of being asked out by the loud blonde. Today however she was not spared of questions. Naruto had been observing Sakura's futile attempts of asking Sasuke out, and then suddenly broke his silence. Sakura, can I ask you something the pink-haired Kanoichi was a little surprised by the calmness of his words. Nani. Naruto why do you even keep trying? You know he's never gonna go out with you. Looking at the way he runs away from girls, I wouldn't be surprised if he would rather date me this earned him a death glare from both his teammates. Don't talk like that about Sasuke I wasn't even finished yet Naruto had raised his voice to break off Sakura. Why do you even like him? Can you tell me? Your entire life he hasn't said a single friendly word to you. Or to anybody as far as I can remember. Now you may answer just shut up Naruto. You don't know anything well, then that's probably why I was asking. However, you don't seem to have an answer either. Sakura fumed in anger as she was dumbstruck to answer. Naruto just stared in her eyes, waiting for a reply that would never come. Sakura simply turned her back towards her teammate and walked back towards the object of her affection. Naruto now plugged his other earphone in his head, grinned and took up a lotus position against the bridge, railing. They all waited in silence for their sensei. Training had proven to be somewhat more of a challenge as Naruto had tried to keep observing Sasuke. Even harder was trying to follow him home. Every street corner he crossed he had used another hench. The last few streets Sasuke had started to turn his head every now and then. So he decided that he had seen enough for the day being. He had his own personal training left to do anyway, and he could use all the time he had. He headed for the river and started jogging over its surface, looking for a quiet spot to practice the new he'd acquired. After about 20 minutes he had found a suitable spot, about a mile behind the training areas. There was a spot where the river was fairly wide with a rock formation that would keep him from view. He took the book from his bag and continued reading where he left off. He started to like that librarian more, and more. He wouldn't give Naruto the time of day, but for Sasuke. When he went in this morning, he was posing as him with a quick henge, and asked if he could provide him with a good book on fire for his teammate, if possible something he could use as well. The book he received must have reflected the librarian's opinion on both him and his teammate. It started for complete beginners and ended with some level techniques. He didn't know whether to feel insulted or pleased, since it was exactly what he needed. The book was simple, and to the point, the introduction was only a page long and thereafter, followed by a simple technique. Technique number 1. Breath of Flame. Description A simple technique used to introduce students to the principles of fire. With this technique, a small flame is produced from the mouth, varying between 10 and 30 inches. Rule number 1. First time students please note to turn your back towards the book while practicing the techniques then, followed the further instructions of molding chakra, making seals, and releasing the molded chakra. It took Naruto only a few minutes to successfully execute the technique. He played with it for a couple of minutes to test his level of control. When he was satisfied he moved on to the next one, which handled the spitting of very small fireballs. He kept repeating this process for about two hours, after successfully having learned six minor techniques. Skipping a few pages ahead, he noticed that Sasuke's favored grand fireball and fire flower techniques were only a few pages further. They would have to wait though. He was hungry and on a tight schedule. He performed what had become his trademark seal. Three shadow clones appeared next to him. Back a team reporting for duty, sir he saluted his crew and stood for them. Clone NR1, your job is to search the forest for fruit, vegetables or any other source of food sir, yes sir clone NR2, step forward. Your mission will be to supply us with firewood, afterwards you will assist clone NR1 in his job I a sir clone NR3, you and I are going fishing. You will search the river upstream, while I will be looking downstream yes sir alright, report back here in 15 minutes. Upon return Naruto brought three fish with him. Being able to walk on water definitely had advantages. His upstream colleague returned moments later with a single fish. Clone number one had done a fine job. Dry wood and leaves were already piled up, ready to be sparked on fire. He returned with his partner, both holding their hands full with berries. They placed their findings on the towel Naruto always carried in his bag and disappeared, while the last clone gutted the fish and spiked them on a stick. Naruto himself lit the fire with one of his new techniques. Hinata had spent the rest of her day on her studies on medical plants and wandered in the forest behind the training areas in search of herbs. She was just on her way home to get a bite to eat until she recognized the smell of roasting fish in the air. The smell was strong, indicating someone must be cooking not far from here. For some reason her intuition told her to check out the source. After a few minutes she came upon a rock formation. Some smoke was coming up from behind it. Silently she moved closer towards the rocks. When she took a peek behind she let out a small gasp and whispered a quiet Naruto kun as she recognized her crush sitting by the fire. A slight smile came across her face as she continued to watch him. 
he was sitting in the lotus position some distance from the fire, upwind, so the smell of fish wouldn't be all over him. His face was pointed upwards. Suddenly he seemed to grab something above his head and looked at the fish. He was definitely holding something in his hand since he had raised it and was looking as if inspecting something. Hanada leaned closer to the rock surface to get a better look on the object he was holding. She must have brushed against a loose rock or something because the next thing she heard was the sound of rock falling on rock. Naruto looked up at the sudden noise. Shit, someone is spying on me. God damn it, who and how much have they seen? I have to find out he stood up and moved as fast and silent as he could towards the point of the sound's origin, hoping the intruder hadn't already fled or didn't hear him coming. Instead of running around the rock to see behind the corner he jumped on top of it and simply looked down at the voyeur. Winata. Hinata nearly fell back from surprise as she heard him. She should have run, she still wanted to, but she cold and would he think of her then. What should she do? What should she say um? Hello Naruto-kun Naruto-kun, that's a first. I knew Hinata from the academy. He had always found her a little weird, but something told him she was a nice person. You hungry, eh? Nani, why would he ask me if I'm hungry? He must know I was watching him, why would. Are you hungry? I'm making dinner, but I'm not a real fish lover. Besides, we're both genin, we should get to know each other. Is this really happening? Naruto kun asking me to have dinner with him. Please don't let this be a dream. I yelled like that, Naruto kun, okay then, hurry up, I think my fish are burning. They weren't. Phew, they're okay. For a minute they got me worried there he picked up two of them and placed them a little further from the fire to prevent them from burning and presented the other two to his unexpected guest. Hinata took the smaller one and gave out a slight arigato dot both sat down near the fire and started eating. So Hinata, what were you doing out here um? I was gathering medical herbs in the forest he, you seem to have wandered off quite a bit. There's not much growing here dot he let his eyes wander over the open place covered by nothing but stones that ran right into the river. At one time the river must have reached this height. Hanada blushed and bowed down her face, looking down at the ground. Oh no, I was on my way home, until I smelled roasted fish. Naruto scratched the back of his head in a gesture of embarrassment. Yeah, well, I guess that was a dead giveaway, he said, laughing. A gentle smile graced Hanada's face. Were you training here, Naruto kun kinda, but it's okay. I enjoy the company, Arigato. How's your fish? It's good, glad you like it. Both continued talking for several hours. It was rare that Naruto had someone to talk to, so when he did he tried making the conversation last, as long as he could dot say Hinata, do you like Raymond I guess so, yes great. We could have dinner sometime at Ichirakus. If you don't mind of course I don't mind. I would really like that alright, it's a deal. Tomorrow at 7 okay with you hi it had started getting dark, and the fire had long gone, out dot it's getting late now though. What say I walk you home okay Naruto come. Both packed up their bags, and together they walked through the forest leading to the training areas. When they reached the city streets, night had already covered Konoha and its blanket of stars, and darkness. Hanada was happy that her face was covered by shadows. The only light falling on them was that of the moon and the lights inside the houses, penetrating through the curtains. She had been blushing for quite some time now, as the side by side walk to her home was like a fantasy of hers. Her crush was walking her home, making sure she would be safe from harm. She was disappointed as they arrived at her home, it was the end of a beautiful dream. This is where I live. Arigato for walking me home, Naruto kun, you're welcome. So I'll see you tomorrow at 7, okay, hi, okay, good night, Hinata, good night, Naruto kun. When he arrived at home, Naruto mused over the day's happenings. He felt good tonight, having accomplished and learned a great deal, and getting to know Hinata better. He hated being alone and always welcomed a new friend in his life. Too bad he hadn't done any chakra training today. Well he had done the leafer head thingy, but then he met Hinata.He remembered the occurrence and noticed there was something else. Something he was thinking at that time. Yeah that was it, he couldn't watch the fish roasting when floating the leaf above his forehead. So, let's try if I can do it at other places. I've got a few more hours to spend before hitting the sack. He picked up a leaf from the stack he kept around the house and placed it on the palm of his hand. When he concentrated his chakra the leaf immediately shot up to the ceiling. Okay. Lesson 1. Hands clearly emit more chakra than the forehead this time he gradually increased his chakra until the leaf gently started to float. After a few minutes he had gotten used to the change in the amount of chakra he had to use, so he placed the leaf on his other hand. He found that his chakra control in his left hand was a little less stable, but figured it might be because he was right-handed. About 15 minutes later he was satisfied with his amount of control. He took a look at his watch, placing the leaf back in his right hand, making it float above his hand again. Damn it, if it only takes half an hour to do this, it can't be that impressive. I might be as good as Sasuke now, but remembering Wave Country I'm probably nothing compared to Sakura. That might not be the point of the whole thing, but I want to humiliate the idiot. 
It's not good enough to just be better, I need to be overwhelming thinking these words, the leaf had started to twist around its axis faster and faster. He noticed, and as he started thinking over it, the leaf almost instantly left his hand twirling wildly. What the hell was that? I didn't know it could do that. Somehow. I must have put more chakra in the technique. Without losing control or changing height, so the extra chakra must have started the rotation. Aki well anyway, if I did it by accident I have to be able to do it again, right more than an hour had gone by before he finally started to comprehend the workings of the technique. Jesus, this is hard. I don't even know why I'm doing this, and if it even would pay off, but if it's this hard, it's gotta be good slowly, but surely he found the way to make the leaf spin in his hands again. Attempts to make the leaf spin faster proved futile as it would simply spin out of his hand. Arg. Do I have to pin you down or what he cursed at the leaf that was now tumbling down the air again. Actually, yeah, let's try that, see how you like that, you little piece of he continued expressing his unsatisfied demands of the leaf's performance. Hurriedly he walked over to his desk, picked up the metal paperweight, and placed it upon the leaf he held in his hand. Now. Let's see you fly, huh? He lifted up both objects with his chakra. He needed to put in a whole lot more because of the added weight, but knowing Naruto, that wasn't much of a problem. Once he gained enough control to keep the paperweight at a steady height he started the rotation. Slowly, but surely the paperweight's movement started to increase. When it came to the point where the leaf would get out of control because of wind friction, it stayed steadily rotating in his hand. Yeah, you ain't so hot now, are you? He continued spinning the weight above his hand, furiously trying to keep increasing the speed of rotation. But after reaching a certain speed the weight seemed to spin out of control and went flying through the room. It crashed into the wall making a dent in the stone, as well as the metal surface of the weight. Hell. I thought I had something there. Ah well, back to the drawing board I guess. Where's the leaf he looked around for a few seconds. He didn't see it fall anywhere or fly off in his usual manner. Where did the damn thing go? Ah well, better pick up the paperweight, it'll probably just hurt my foot against it in the morning otherwise when his fingers reached the bottom though, he quickly pulled back. Sheed, hot 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 he ran for the faucet and turned on the cold water. Man, what the hell made that thing so hot? It was levitating three inches above my hand, it should be room temperature he went back to the weight, picking it up with a wet towel. Inspecting the underneath only made things more strange. Again, there was no trace to the whereabouts of the missing leaf, but the underneath of the weight looked as if it had been polished on a piece of sandpaper. A spiraling pattern was visible on the place he concentrated his chakra. What the hell? Tonight's only getting stranger and stranger. Maybe I should call it a night before things get out of hand. It's late anyway, and I've got training tomorrow. I'll figure out what's caused this then he put the paperweight on the kitchen sink to let it cool off and placed a kunai on his papers to keep them from drifting around, then he hit the sack. At 7 Naruto got out of bed, fixed himself a quick breakfast, and headed off to Sasuke's house, again. Ichi had brought a notebook with him this time. Once more he found his teammate training in the Ichiha courtyard, while Naruto hid himself somewhere out of sight, in the form of one of the raven-haired boy's fangirls. His disgust for his teammate only grew as he observed his actions, taking notes and making sketches of his movements. What's so special about you, Echa? It's not enough that you were left a mansion fit for a clan, a bloodline technique that allows you to use others' jutsus as if they are yours, and the love and respect of the entire village, but you have to take them all for granted more scribbling followed, as the onyx-eyed boy launched a combination of kicks, punches and elbows against the training dummies. How do you come up with those techniques? There's no one to train you. I don't think there's even anyone in the village who uses your style. So where do you get those fancy moves? Once again Sasuke left the courtyard. This was Naruto's signal to head for his team's meeting point. He arrived last at the bridge, not counting their sensei off course. As usual Sakura was trying to chat up Sasuke, who was just staring off into nothingness. Naruto just took a seat on the railing again and plugged in his earphone. He was nodding his head slowly to the beats of the music, but never taking his eyes off his teammates. The waiting was mind-numbing. After about 45 minutes he suddenly called out to Sakura. The pink-haired Jenin looked a little agitated when she turned her head. He, looks like she remembers the little talk we had yesterday. Good, this could be worthwhile yes, Naruto she sighed. You got an answer yet the blonde asked, removing his headphones. Are you there again with your stupid questions? Look Naruto, I don't know what you're trying to do, but you're starting to piss me off. So if this is some plan of you to get me on a date, just give it up, cause it will never happen Naruto didn't even blink. Yesterday, he was just being curious and rational. It had been a simple question. He hadn't expected an answer and had turned out to be right about it. Today, he just liked being nonsense. Ichi slowly stood up and walked toward Sakura, holding his hands behind his back. When he stood in front of her, he slowly leaned forwards inches from her face. Then he softly spoke. 
Do you think I look like I care? He turned his back to her and walked back to his spot. Sakura, on the other hand, launched a fist towards the back of her teammate's head. Naruto had expected it, however, and made a circular motion. He caught her arm and held it in a tight grip. His hand fitted easily around her slender arm. Sakura was surprised by the blonde's sudden movements. His next word surprised her even more. If you need to use violence to prove a point, you have already lost the argument. With. But he released her arm and moved on like nothing had ever happened. What the hell is happening to Naruto? First he turns almost so quiet and now he's turning philosophical on me. I almost believe he's genuinely not interested in going out with me anymore. Something's going on and I'll find out what thinking about the Sakura position herself once again next to Sasuke. This time, she remained silent for a longer time however. Something's definitely up with the dope. He's been way too quiet for quite some time now and it's been days since he did or said anything stupid. Whatever, he's none of my concern, I've got bigger fish to fry. Two hours later Kakashi finally arrived. Konnichiwa, sorry I'm late, but I noticed I was wearing two different socks, and when I came home I noticed all my clothes were in the laundry liar Sakura shouted out of force of habit. Normally Naruto would always back her up, these last few days however she had been scolding Kakashi on her own. As always he ignored her and went on with explaining today's training. Today we'll be making a visit to training area number 58. You've probably heard of it, it's the one with the mechanized dummies. Your objective will be to obtain a wooden box positioned on the main hill. It's heavily guarded, weighs about 60 pounds, and is not to be damaged in any way. So Sasuke, watch out for those fires, and Naruto just doesn't drop them. You've got till 5 to obtain the box by any means, and deliver it to the following address. With it the silver hair disappeared in a puff of smoke. When it cleared a piece of paper with the address on it was left. Naruto picked it up and stuffed the paper in his pocket. After which he took off in the direction of the designated area. Sasuke and Sakura quickly picked up his pace. It wasn't long before the raven haired boy took his place in front of Naruto as they jumped from rooftop to rooftop through the village. I cocky idiot. I. Four minutes later they arrived at the area entrance. Sasuke stopped and started summing up the situation. Okay, what I know of the area is that it spans about an eight mile diameter, including a small forested area, and a small creek runs down from the central hill. This area here provides little to no cover, and far as I know there are about 80 or so animated dummies set up on strategic points. This is probably a simple go-get training that should test our offensive capabilities. I suggest we make our way to the creek and follow it to the main hill. I'll take point, Naruto, you guard the back, Sakura, you'll be support negative he, excuse me Sasuke. Asked, amused as if disagreeing with him on matters of shinobi, was the dumbest thing to do. Naruto had a serious look on his face, and his eyes never seemed to let go of Sasuke's. I said no. I've got better things to do with my time. We do this thing, today's training is over. So I'm saying we do this as fast as possible. We go straight for the main hill, smashing anything we come across, get the damn crate, deliver it, and make some real use of the rest of the day. And I'm taking point and why on earth should we listen to a dope like you? Ridicule poured out of Sasuke's dark onyx eyes. Because if this is a test of our offensive skills, like you say it is, let's be offensive. That is, unless you're afraid of a little combat. Or do you think you won't be able to keep up with me? A foxy grin appeared on the blonde's face. Don't make me hurt you, Dobe Sasuke tightened his fists. Feeling threatened, Icha. Scared of a challenge if that's what it takes to shut you up, bring it fine. You follow the fence a hundred yards one way, I'll do the same the other way. First one to the crate wins. And you know, I'm feeling pretty generous today, so you can even take Sakura with you I don't need her, she ld only slow me down ouch, now that's a little bit harsh, she's standing right there you know. Besides, I never said you had to whatever, you're on, dope. The dark haired boy walked casually to the entrance, followed by Naruto. Oh Sasuke, after you lose, I'll be happy to give you some basic combat lessons I'll make you eat those words next time we're sparring, dope whatever, let's just get started already both boys darted off in a wild blur. After passing the said hundred yards both disappeared from view in the canopy. Sakura had been standing there dumbfounded as the argument had found a place. She had wanted to speak up to stand by Sasuke's case, but had been cut short by both boys. Every time. When Sasuke had finally said something about her, she felt the words as if they had been a stab to the heart. I would only slow you down. She sobbed the words quietly to herself. Now this sure is interesting. But it verifies my suspicions. Anyway, I ought to keep an eye on those two should do something about her as well though. In another puff of smoke Kakashi appeared in front of the pink-haired Genin, startling her and making her lose balance. Ungracefully Sakura fell on her bottom, looking up to the tall silver-haired dot A. Sakura, why aren't you training with your teammates he said every word was an effort to her throat dot dot, he said, I would only slow him down. Sasu he's right dot the words were cold. But that shouldn't stop you from training. 
As a matter of fact, it should encourage you. The Jounin's face turned into one of understanding and sympathy. He knelt down to her level, Sakura, let's face it, your Taijutsu is the weakest of the team, and your stamina and chakra levels are barely acceptable for a genin. You try to make up for it by this perfect chakra control of yours, but you have been seriously neglecting your stamina, bringing you to this situation. Kakashi offered his hand to the young girl. When she reached for it he helped her on her feet again. So we'll have to work on that. Your new training for the rest of the day will be to run 10 laps around this area. After the first round you'll be encountering some dummies every few kilometers. And I suggest you start doing this on a daily basis the played his hand through the young Jenin's hair, now get going girl, or you'll never be able to keep up with your teammates. With that he disappeared once more that day. Once the smoke cleared, Sakura whispered a slight thank you, Kakashi sensei and entered the training area. Sasuke encountered his first opponents less than two minutes after he had vanished into the trees. Five dummies jumped in view, seemingly coming from nowhere. Never slowing his pace he ran towards the men took out the one on the right by faking a straightforward jumping kick and making a roundhouse at the last second. The dummy's head got crushed on impact with his left foot. Immediately afterwards he jumped high up and threw three shuriken at three other dummies. They seemed to have no effect on the wooden dolls as they just stayed stuck in their body parts. Seeing that the dummies kept moving he started forming seals in midair. When his feet found the branch of a nearby tree he had completed them and threw a grand fireball towards them. Three more dummies found their demise. One of the survivors saw the opportunity to launch an attack from a lower branch and came jumping towards Sasuke, who easily dodged the oncoming dummies. When he was mid-air he got attacked by the other dummy and had to block an incoming wooden foot. He managed to grab the dummy's leg and slam his opponent against a tree. His last opponent met its end when Sasuke countered his punch and broke his neck. He, that only slowed me down for about 17 seconds. But that fireball takes too much chakra if I want to keep up this pace. If I pull one every odd or every third time I should be able to still make good time though. That dope doesn't stand a chance. I see Sasuke is handling himself perfectly, as I expected. At this pace he could reach the package in about half an hour. He's got a pretty good chance at breaking the course record for his age, not including speed specialists like that Rock Lee kid, of course. Naruto shouldn't be too far behind, it's only been two and a half minutes, better go check up on him Kakashi set off to a point where Naruto should pass any second on his arrival. When more than 30 seconds passed he decided to head back to check if the blonde he found was the broken parts of the five dummies. A quick glance was enough to see that the dummies were broken by normal hand and footwork, no ninjutsu seemed to have been used, as there were no traces of abnormal damage to the dummies or the surrounding area. He must be using cage bunshin, but if he's this far already he must be using a lot of them. My guess is he makes the bunshins fight the dummies and continues running to his goal. Judging by the distance between his footsteps he's keeping up a fast pace too. Good thinking Naruto, you'll make record time that way, just one problem. Since your chakra control isn't all that you're probably using way too much, and the high pace will drain your stamina, you'll be lucky if you reach the goal at all, were the thoughts going through Kakashi's head as he followed the trail Naruto was leaving behind. It wasn't long before he had caught up with his student. The kid was keeping up the pace alright, he was easily topping Sasuke's. Now let's see how exactly you handle combat. Moments later the next batch of dummies was activated and attacked Naruto from the flank. Naruto simply jumped out of the way of the oncoming dummies and created exactly one clone for each dummy, never even slowing down for a second. The clones made short work of the opponents, when one dummy was defeated the victorious clone would help out another, ganging up on the remaining dummies. The whole fight lasted less than 10 seconds. All six clones had survived the ordeal, but they were in bad shape, sweating profoundly and trying to catch their breath. Clones are created with a fixed amount of chakra. This amount determines their stamina and the amount of chakra they can use. They can't regain any stamina by resting, and their lifespan is determined by the amount of stamina they have at creation and the amount they use in fights or other activities. Now, your chakra gets split up evenly among you and your clones, plus he needs a steady amount of it to keep up this high pace. That in the constant replenishing and distributing of his supply should wear him out, significantly. Either Naruto got lucky when he made these clones, or he had a pretty good idea of the amount of the clones and chakra he would need to win this fight. But that would require a good deal of control. Could he really have improved so much in such a short time? That would be amusing, interesting and doubtful. It's not like his stamina has grown so much lately either. I just hope he's not getting it from somewhere else. His signature seems clean, thought the journalist frowned at these thoughts. There was definitely something going on with Naruto. He had become so quiet lately, more reserved, more mature. He was almost reminding him of dot dot Sasuke but, why would he do that? As far as I can tell he never liked his teammate. Why would he start following his example? The two of you have been like day and night. 
one open and enthusiastic, one calm and reserved, one cherry, one grim, one bright, one dark, one loved and admired, one Hano. Naruto, I'm not sure what you're doing, but I think you're making a big mistake. For 20 minutes Naruto continued his wild dash before finally coming to a stop at the top of the hill dot surrounding the crate were 10 dummies, each carrying a weapon. He threw a quick glance towards the direction Sasuke should be coming from. Nothing yet, good, that gives me at least 30 more seconds the final dummies guarding the crate looked different from those he had encountered on his way here, they looked smoother, as if made with greater care. And they were all carrying weapons, 5 were carrying swords, 2 had spears, and 3 more had dot. Okay, this is getting old, but I am not letting that idiot beat me now, not now I'm so close. Cage bunch and no, when the smoke cleared the dummies were surrounded by 3 times their number in clones. Sorry, but I don't have time to play with you guys. Charge the clones had been standing in a 3 row circle around the dummies. On Naruto's command the first 2 rows charged into their opponents. The last row jumped straight up and threw them at the dummies wielding dots and kunai missed their targets being dodged or fended off, some of them struck other dummies, but none of those which did hit their targets seemed to be doing any damage. That wasn't the point though, as they were only used as a distraction for the kunai wielding dummies. So they would not be able to target the flow of oncoming clones. Before the dummies could react to the attack steel and wood had met flesh made shadow. Each dummy was now fighting a clone, some already had fallen in battle. But every time a clone was destroyed a second one would strike the offending dummy, and whatever weakness he exposed before it could recover his stance from attacking. It was a devastating strategy, but of little use in a battle with real people. In little more than 6 seconds it was all over, 15 clones and Naruto himself were all that was left of the 50 warriors that had entered combat. Naruto was leaning with his hands on his knees, catching his breath. After a few moments he felt sufficiently recovered and dragged himself towards the crate and positioned himself on top of it. The long run had exhausted him, his legs felt sore, and his lungs were burning. He needed to train more on his physique. A ninja shouldn't show weakness, and exhaustion clearly is a sign of one. Tomorrow he would add running a few laps around the village to his list of things to do. The clones had formed a circle around him, with their backs towards him sitting in the lotus position. There was no need for them anymore, but discarding them would just be a waste of chakra. Naruto didn't fully understand how or why, but there was something about having a multitude of clones around. Things seemed to be simpler. It was as if his mind became divided into smaller pieces, each thinking for themselves. He knew what every clone was thinking about, and they knew every thought and desire of him. Sometimes he was surprised of what went on in the minds of the fellas. The clone directly in front of him was counting the time for Sasu to arrive, the one to his right imagined various ways to get the crate to its destination, another one wondered how Sasu could get those fancy Tai Jutsu moves. The one directly behind him was reliving the events that happened last night with Hinata, Naruto had enjoyed those moments of peace, just talking with someone. But he would see her again later today, so he left the clone alone with these thoughts. The best way he could think of working with the clones was as if his subconscious was almost completely removed and used by his creations. Which Kinda explained why he found everything so much simpler when he had some around, and why he always felt a little wiser after he had meditated with them and they had disappeared. They all looked at different things that occupied his mind and gave those thoughts a lot of attention, sometimes solving the problems completely. Sasuke reached the open grass at the front clone's count of 257, being at lower ground he could not make out Naruto's form at the top of the hill. Ha, looks like I'm there. Let's see what the grand finale at the top will hold in store. That poor dope didn't stand a chance in hell. Sasuke grinned at these thoughts and began the final climb to his goal. Ascending the hill robbed him of his vision of the top. When he finally reached it however he wasn't happy with what he saw. Oh and top of the hill he saw the objective of his mission, and before sat alone Naruto, leaning his back against a crate, casually lying in wait for him. What the hell? How the dot dot this can't be right. It must be Jan Jutsu, cause there's no way Sharingan you're gonna copy the movements and chakra molding of me, sitting on my ass. Jesus, they call you a genius. I figured that one out without even having seen it Naruto no, it's your aunt Sherry. Who do you think, genius no, this is impossible. He couldn't have gotten here so fast. My pace was high, and none of my encounters took me over 20 seconds. Naruto couldn't have possibly beaten me, yet here he stands how how. Easy. Allow me to demonstrate. Naruto got up to feet and joined his hands as if to mold chakra. With his Sharingan eyes Sasuke didn't see the blonde gathering any chakra at all, yet he kept this pose for a few seconds before yelling dot ass sitting no jutsu after this the young genin smoothly sat himself on his ankles, leaned back against the crate and moved his feet a little forward, so they stood comfortably dot think. You pull that one off, Ichiha anger and frustration shot out from Sasuke's face. How had this gotten here so fast? He couldn't have possibly gotten here so fast. Naruto couldn't be better than him. 
He was a loud mid clown, barely worthy of the title of ninja. Have I been slacking off? No. No way, I have been training hard every day. I can't have been slacking off, not with him still breathing. Then how how did you get here that fast, you idiot you're asking me, and I'm the idiot there's no way you could have beaten me here. You must have taken a shortcut a shortcut. As in, shorter than a straight line kind a shortcut. Yeah sure Sasuke, I took a shortcut through a black hole. Sasuke's world was turning upside down. Naruto had beaten him. It was something he had long thought impossible, now proven to be true. The blonde was right, he couldn't have possibly taken a shorter or faster path. At least he wasn't rubbing it in yet, something he hadn't expected from the loudmouth brat. Hey Ichiha, stop standing there and help me move this crate will ya? I'd like to get on with my day. Naruto's legs were still sore from the long run, and carrying that crate back hadn't done them much good either. He had thought about leaving Sasuke alone with the crate, but it opted not to, since there was no way the raven-haired boy could have gotten it delivered on his own. Naruto could have created a clone to help him carry the crate, but to carry it alone would require more strength than either of the teammates had. Since his legs wouldn't allow him any further physical training for the rest of the day, he opted for some quiet recovery time in the park. He took a seat on a bench and opened the book on prominent clans in Kanoha that he had borrowed from the library. The book covered three clans. The Hayuga, the Achiha and the Aburam. He, Hinata is part of one of Kanoha's most powerful clans. They'll have never imagined her as royalty. The first part handled the Hayuga, starting with the history of the clan, since the founding of Kanoha Village. It wasn't the most thrilling piece of lecture for Naruto, but it would be a necessity to fulfill his plan. Besides, if he were to become Hokage, he would have to know more about the inner workings of the village. So far he had only read about the first 50 years of Kanoha history, and already there seemed to be a complicated net of politics and diplomacy among the clans. Thereby came that at that time the Great Ninja War waged across the land, which didn't make things simpler. He had learned about the war in the academy, but never had the lessons been as intricate as the book described. Fifty pages later Naruto desperately needed a break. He had expected somewhat lighter literature. He put the book away in his bag, stretched his legs for the third time that day, and strolled to the river. As he watched the flow of the river he noticed little whirlpools here and there. He wandered over for a closer look at the phenomenon. He sat himself near the edge of the river and let his mind wander. How would my chakra look if I stepped on one of those? With a small one like this, I'll probably just flatten it out, but let's say I stood on top of a really strong one. Would a twist and turn my chakra? In his mind he imagined his chakra taking the form of the little whirlpool, twisting and turning around itself that's it. That's exactly what I've been doing all this time. He replayed the events of the night before in his head, imagining the twisting whirlpool of chakra in his hands. No, that's not quite right. It didn't add up, I was releasing chakra from the entire palm of my hand, so the base should be pretty big, and the circular damage to my paperweight was a little smaller. So it would kinda look the other way around. But not entirely pointy at the top. He, imagine I would have made it completely cone-shaped, I would have probably completely drilled through it. Hey, now that would be cool. If I could develop that technique, it would be as if I'd be punching people with a drill instead of just my fists. With renewed enthusiasm he stood up and wanted to run over to the forest to try out his theory on the trees, but then his legs cramped up again. Oh oh, wow man, I really have to start working on those fast long distance runs. It was 3 past 7, and Hinata had been waiting at Ichiraku for the last 6 minutes. She was sitting quietly in the corner of the stand, waiting in her shell, already almost completely forgotten in the old man's mind. I hope he hasn't forgotten about me. Please don't let him forget me. No, no, he's probably just a little late. I shouldn't have come here so early. I only make myself more nervous if I show up early. Naruto wouldn't just forget about me. He would never break his word like that. It's only a few past seven, I'm sure he'll show up any time now. But what if he doesn't? Boy, Hinata the timid pupil startled as the blonde boy made an enthusiastic appearance. Hi, Naruto sorry I'm a little late. Overdid myself a little at training today, I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long no, it's okay, I was a little early oh. I trust Ichira-san has treated you well then eh who what? You're kidding right? Hey Ichira, don't tell me you have been ignoring my guest all the time she's been waiting eh the old man turned around with a dull face, instantly forming to a smile when he recognized his most loyal customer. Oi Naruto. Goman I didn't know she was waiting for you. Ichira stepped over to the side where both youngsters were sitting and made a slight bow to the young girl. Ichira. Kumara, at your service. Hey excuse me, but you seem to be lacking something in your eyes Ichira, Baka, Hinata is a Hayuga. They are the most respected clan in Kanoha, and they all have eyes like that oh, I get it. Too respected to eat a lowly little Raymond stand he. My apologies Miss Hayuga-sama. 
Now may I be so kind as to take your order please ah, I'd like some miso ramen, please very well miss, I'll start right on it hey, what about me what, you're still here? You better behave, little commoner, I am having a well respected client right now. This place is finally getting some class what the? I brought her here, old man sure you did, but then why did she show up before you ano, I don't make me come over there old timer don't make me spike your ramen with wasabi again, slick ano I oughta beat you up with your own spoon of cheer and, I should put these chopsticks in the dark. Warm and very uncomfortable place Naruto you still haven't fixed the light in the restroom I always forget to buy a bolt when I'm in the store I think I might still have one laying around at home, I'll bring it over later tonight thanks kid, now what will you have beef Raymond, please sure, fix you right, up the old man winked at Hinata and turned around again to his kettle. Nah Naruto oh, sorry Hinata, it's a little thing me and Ichira do from time to time oh so, how was your day it was okay. Kurinai sensei had us training at area 12 today, then we had to track down a little boy whose parents lost sight of him. We found him playing in the park I bet you three would make a great team of hunter nins one day Arigato hey Naruto, you two want that order to go erm, Hinata, would you mind if we went for a stroll? If I sit around too much, my legs ll be sore again I don't mind, Naruto to go will be fine, Ichiro okay, here you go. I'll put yours on your tab, Miss Hinata's will be on the house hey, why is mine never on the house does it matter? You would have been paying for hers anyway, right erm, right good, now bon appetit. See you later kid, and be sure to visit anytime Miss Hayuga sama Ergato, Kumara-san. The two young genin left the Raymond stand. Naruto thought it best to leave the more crowded market area, and took a narrow street where he knew few people walked around this time of day. He didn't know whether he did it for himself to avoid the glares of the adults, or for her, to avoid people seeing her with him. Chances were her family wouldn't like her to be hanging around with him. So a eh, Hinata, is there any place you'd like to go? Cause I actually have no idea of what I'm doing right now eh, there's a place in the forest not far from here, where I often have lunch with my team sounds good to me. Lead the way, I'll be right behind you hi. Few minutes later they arrived at a small open area in the forest. Naruto noticed this place was indeed often used. The grass was flat at certain places, and there were traces of a recently made cooking fire. Nice place you guys got here Arigato so, how do you get along with your team well. Okay, I guess. Kiba's nice, in his own way. Well he rarely says anything at all, but he always knows what's to be done what about Kurinai Kurinai's a good person as well as a teacher. She always looks after us and never puts us down. I like her seems like you got lucky then you don't like your team, Naruto what's there to like I thought at the academy that you that you like Sakura Hinata's voice was even softer than it was normally. Her eyes fled down as she spoke, as if she regretted speaking the words before she said them. Every letter of them seemed to hurt her while she formed the words in her mind, yet it was a question of which she had to face the answer. Eh, uh, guess what I did back then. But I've come a long way since the academy the blue haired girl's eyes slowly looked up, showing a sparkle of hope. Really Naruto seemed firmly focused on a particular piece of beef in his cup of ramen, as he kept poking it with his chopsticks. Yeah, well, I honestly don't remember what I ever saw in her. I mean, she's pretty and all, but all she's ever interested in, or talks about her sides up with is Sasuke. I swear, the guy can't do anything wrong, and I can't do a thing right for her. If he would set himself on fire one day, she'll probably praise him for the color of the flames, and then join him what about your sensei Kakashi? Same story really, only he doesn't show it that much. I can't really call him a cold-hearted idiot, but I only hear him badmouth me. I've never heard him compliment me, while I never hear him complain about Sasuke. Even Sakura gets his thumbs up for her perfect chakra control. Today at training I beat Sasuke to the package, tomorrow I'll probably be scolded for it. No matter what I do, at the end of the day they all still look at me as the dobe he poked viciously at the piece of beef, and then scooped up a big portion of Raymond. A an uncomfortable silence fell between the two, as they both looked down on their Raymond, thinking of something better to talk about. So erm, um, Naruto-kun, how do you know Kumara-san so well oh, he opened his shop here in town a few weeks after I was released from the orphanage. I've been eating there ever since Ano oh, don't you ever get tired of Raymond all the time well on rare occasions, but there are a lot of different flavors so I get by. Besides, I don't really go there for the food. It's the service that does it. Ichiraku's the just about only place in town I get welcomed with a smile oh, but don't you ever dot dot cook at home the blonde boy blushed ever so slightly, scratching the back of his head before looking up with an innocent grin on his face dot I I can't cook but, those fish you made the other day that was about the limit of my cooking abilities. Kakashi made those once when we were on a mission. It's not really ho cuisine either. You just take a fish, gut it and shove it on a stick. Anyone can do that would why would you like me to teach you yeah will do that if if you want to are you kidding me, that'd be great. When do we start erm, um, I I could come over tomorrow if you like great. I'll make sure my kitchen is in order then. 
The two of them talked for another hour before they decided to go their own ways. Naruto headed home to pick up the lamp he promised, and then left again to bring them to the old Ichira. Then he was off again, dashing for the woods to make use of what little daylight he had left. He started off about the same way he did last night, picking up a rock, gathering enough chakra in his hand to make it float, and then making it rotate as fast as he could. Once again the rock suddenly shot out of his hand like the paperweight had last night. This time the rock had landed upside down so Naruto could inspect the bottom of it without burning his hands. The rock apparently was less resistant to the friction of his chakra, since the spiraling circle was much deeper this time, and the grooves were showing much clearer. The circle was about three fingers in diameter. Now, how am I supposed to shrink you down at the top? The rest of the time he had, Naruto practiced his newly found on a tree, taking a more horizontal approach. It was some hours of trial, error, and repetition, but in the end, he had managed to shrink the top of his chakra cone to the diameter of his index finger. He was close, but would have to try again tomorrow, since he wouldn't be able to check his progress in the dark. Once back home, he remembered he would still have to get his kitchen in order. He pulled open the cupboard and took out the pots and pans that had come with the house. It had been six years since he last looked at them, and over the course of time, they had done nothing but gather dust, grease and all those other unidentifiable things that objects seemed to cover themselves with after a while. He dreaded the sight of them as he put them all on the sink. It would take at least the best part of an hour to get them all in a presentable state. Mon, I don't have time for this. I barely got any training done today, and I have to get up early tomorrow. Without a second thought, he created a clone and put him to work, while Naruto himself went off to his study. He read up on the next five fires in the book, familiarizing himself with the seals and the molding of chakra. After about half an hour, he felt confident he would be able to successfully execute all five of them tomorrow. As far as ninjutsu went, he was fairly sure he was nearing Sasuke's level, but his problem lay in the field of Tai. But where does that nonsense get his moves? I've never seen that style anywhere else, so it must be self-taught. Still it's way too evolved to be his own, so it must be a house style. Then there must be records of it somewhere. The clan's been around for over 150 years, so someone must have at least tried to take over or find a response to the Ajay style. Then again, we are talking about a clan of copycats. One day I'll get to the bottom of this. For now I'll just stick to analyzing his moves, maybe later I'll take my chance in the library or go have a look at his place. By now the clone had finished up in the kitchen and had done some minor cleaning of the living room. There wasn't much to clean up anyway. Naruto never spends much time indoors. Being satisfied with his work the clone discarded himself in a puff of smoke. Naruto himself spent another hour reading up on Hyuga history. There were still 15 pages of history before the book would handle the Hyuga bloodline and their use of it in their fighting style, but fatigue was getting to the blonde. The day had been a long one and tomorrow would be no better. Suddenly it seemed like the day wouldn't just give itself up so suddenly. Naruto was just about to put out his pants as he heard one of his floorboards creaking behind him. He knew his house, and that floorboard didn't just creak on his own. Some parts of the roof did on windy days, but each part of the house had its own particular noise. Instinctively he grabbed two kunai on his legs and twisted himself. Nothing to be seen, but he knew he wasn't alone in his home. He glanced around through the open part of the screen that separated his bedroom from the rest of his house, looking for any cast shadows or other traces of the intruder. I rarely ever get any visitors, let alone at this hour, so I'm not picky about them. But I do tend to get those who don't knock out as soon as possible no answer. He tried sensing for chakra, something that wasn't really his specialty, but he got lucky. He should be about a yard behind the screen a few feet to the right. Silently he created a shadow clone. Without making any sound Naruto moved so his opponent would be right in front of him, separated only by the thin paper screen. His clone then suddenly jumped into the other room, ready to throw his first kunai, but then suddenly yelled stop at his creator. Naruto was about to throw his kunai at the intruder, but then suddenly lowered it as he heard the clone's mental signal and the supporting scream. The clone holstered his weapons and then returned to the bedroom. Naruto put on his shirt and on his turn entered the living room. Eyed. Never suspected anybody who had sprinted 5 miles would be jumping around this way later on the day it's not something I would recommend to everybody either so are you gonna tell me anything about it, or are you just gonna hush up about it all, and pretend like nothing happened tell you about what, how about the fact that your chakra control has drastically risen so suddenly. Or how you improved your taijutsu. And maybe most interesting of all, how you did those two at the same time what's wrong with me improving my skills as a ninja there's nothing wrong with that, I'm just worried about you losing your skills as a person. You seem to be growing more distant from your teammates. Naruto thought about his sensei's comment for a second and then started laughing slightly. Haha, <laughs> how can you say the Kakashi sensei, when there barely ever was a team to begin with, this finally pulled Kakashi's eye away from his little book? 
he gave a serious look to his student and finally said I know you and your team don't always get along with Naruto, but I could always depend on you when the need arose. Now however it seems things are getting out of hand so of course the problem must lie with me, that's utter crap sensei. Why don't you bother Sasuke about it? It's not like he's got the perfect personality. Or what about Sakura? No, no, forget Sakura, we both know that she's a total lost case. H-O-W, would your team spirit be if you were paired up with a fancy training dummy with a hinge on it, and it's bitch I see so do you want to transfer to another team and, then what, doing missions with two other people who hate my guts, not just for breaking up their perfectly good team. But also for being what I am? So we could have two worthless teams. Hell that sensei, the team just has to accept me for who I am, and if they can't handle that, so be it. But I'm not running away. Naruto unconsciously scratched his left hand after reaching the end of his sentence. Kakashi noticed and as he looked down on it, he remembered the first time he had heard those words from his student. That mission had changed his perspective of Naruto a great deal. He wondered if his student would reveal another part of himself again. Okay the silver-haired said as he started reading his book again, that'll do for now. But if the situation does not improve over the next few weeks, I'm booting you out myself that was a prospect neither teacher or student looked forward to. It would surely put a stop to Naruto's plan. Bakashi didn't want to put his student through this either, but if he didn't there was no telling what Naruto could get himself into. Besides, he liked Sasuke, but one of them on his team was enough. After Kakashi took his leave Naruto once again headed for his bedroom. He was surprised to find his clone there, sitting in a meditating position. Making a quick mental contact with it, he learned that the clone wanted to think about some things for a while. Naruto was a little confused about this answer, but disregarded it as he was too tired for discussion, and since the clone was probably right. There was a lot to think about. Naruto awoke that morning feeling completely renewed. He grabbed a towel and headed for the shower. Upon returning to the kitchen area he found out that his clone really had been thinking about some things. On the table he found a stack of papers written in his own handwriting. Apparently his clone had spent the night thinking about a training schedule for a week. Just about everything was taken into account, endurance training, improving chakra control, observing Sasuke's tojutsu training, studying theory while waiting for Kakashi, training with his team, practice, tojutsu training and recreational time. The training would be extensive, taking optimal use of all the time of the week. He was going through some of the details of the training as suddenly his watch started beeping. Apparently the clone had taken the liberty of programming his alarm. He quickly looked back at the schedule and saw that he should start training already. He quickly grabbed an apple, put the schedule in a pocket on his vest and headed out the door. His first stop would be the Achiha Mansion. As he passed the place he created a clone that should last for about two hours and passed him a notebook and a pen. Both nodded towards each other in understanding before the clone made its way into the Achiha courtyard and Naruto went on with what now became his morning ritual. It was still 7 in the morning, but already the village was fully awakened. The blonde ran further towards the most nearby gate that would let out of the village. From that point we followed the village walls clockwise until he came to the river that flowed partly around Kanoha. Naruto's morning jog suddenly took another turn as he leaped for the water, and he continued running across it. The river followed the village up to the south gate and then continued streaming further away into the country. It took Naruto nearly an hour before he reached it, which meant he had almost an entire hour left before he had to show up at the bridge to meet with the rest of his team. As he arrived back home, he put his clothes in the machine, after taking out the papers, and took another shower. After he put his clothes in the dryer he finally had a real breakfast and then took off again. On the way to the meeting point he passed the Ichiha's house again and quickly entered the courtyard where he picked up the clone's notes, leaving the rest of the notebook and the pen where they were to be used again the next morning. As he neared the meeting spot he looked for a nice location to spend the next few hours reading. Once found he created another clone which he sent to the bridge. Maybe at some time in the future he would start doing some reading with his team, but there was no reason for them to know about this particular literature. Besides, the sooner he would finish this book, the sooner that problem solution would probably arise. So much about him had changed in a matter of weeks, so even Naruto himself had any idea of what he would be doing in the next one. His clone arrived at the bridge and was greeted with Sasuke's complete ignoring of his existence, and surprisingly by an accusation of Sakura. You're late I am. The clone looked down to his watch. Wow, I sure am. By two whole minutes. By God. How could I? Please forgive my tardiness Miss Haruna's and Sakura's only reply was the dirty look she threw at him. The clone just walked past her and sat himself in the lotus position in wait for Kakashi's arrival. Naruto himself however wasn't in the most zen state of mind. Last night he had read that what he had heard to be true as he had read the beginning of the arrogant Uchiha clan. Now he was finally finding out about the complete powers of the Hyuga bloodline. 
their 360 degrees of vision, the ability to see through solid objects, to see one's opponent's chakra stream and more. And the Achiha descended from this clan. He knew the Sharingan could be used to predict someone's movements in battle, to copy jutsus of nearly any kind and to see through, but now he had read about the Hayuga, he wondered if there was more. He hated those eyes. He hated them. He hated them and the skull that carried them, he hated them and the blood that ran through them. He hated the Achiha. He resisted the urge to rip the book to shreds and slowly put it down. He needed to calm down. Only half an hour had passed, so that should still give him plenty of time. Time that could be made use of, instead of being totally wasted, waiting on some bridge, being around some total hellwat piece of sh calm down Naruto, you're trying to calm down the orange clad gen and gently lean backwards against the tree. Closing his eyes he reached for the three leaves he had picked earlier, and calmly let them float on his forehead and his hands. As the two in his hand slowly started turning Naruto let his mind flow freely. It wasn't long before Naruto had once again found his peace. He stopped the rotation on his right hand and dropped the leaf on the grass, then he picked the one above his forehead out of the air and did the same. He continued spinning the leaf in his left hand as he was reading the book with a content look on his face. Oh and the bridge however things suddenly started to get more complicated. Nah, Naruto the silent clone turned his head towards the young Kinoichi as he opened his eyes. He had hoped to be able to spend the greater part of his time meditating. Two hours was a long time for any clone. Yes, what's up with you lately? The clone broke eye contact and started staring in a different direction. What do you care? I just dot dot I just want to know if you're okay. Sakura. Said well she on her turn lowered her head. I'm fine then. Why are you acting so different lately? What's wrong with the way I act? It's just dot dot. Not like you well, since you weren't happy with the old me, that shouldn't be much of problem, right but I liked him better than this one yeah, I'm sure having a clumsy, loud mouth baka who nearly always acts on impulse, can be amusing at times I, didn't mean you were then you shouldn't have kept saying it. It's simple Haruna, all the time you've been telling me to be more like him as, he threw a glance at his other teammate, well I assure you that in a few weeks you won't be able to tell the difference. Sasuke never was one to get involved in others discussions, but this concerned him. The occurrences of yesterday still going through his mind might have something to do with his edginess. Ha, you'll never be able to reach up to my level, dope. You might as well stop trying and save yourself the embarrassment he had expected a flaming reply from the dope, instead he just slowly adjusted his eyes to his direction and spoke in a quiet diplomatic voice. Hey Ichiha, just for your information, I haven't told anyone about yesterday's occurrence. But I'm planning on repeating it as often as I can in the future. So if you don't want your reputation of the genius Achiha prodigy smothered too badly, I would keep stupid comments like that to myself, if I were you Sasuke's eyes burned furry towards the clone. His pride had been given a huge smack in the face by what happened yesterday, and he wasn't about to let that happen again. Regaining his composure he quickly replied. Dot he. Too bad for you dope, because whatever happened yesterday will have been the only time something like that occurred we shall see about that Achiha, we shall see. Sakura had been quiet during their dialogue. Besides from the fact that she had no idea what had happened yesterday, she now wasn't sure whether she wanted to know anymore. Until a minute ago she had been sure Sasuke-kun had won Naruto's stupid challenge, but now nothing seems certain anymore. So much had changed so fast recently, and she had no idea what could happen next. Naruto made the switch with his clone after Kakashi arrived when they headed towards the river. Apparently they were given a D-ranked mission of cleaning up the riverbanks and everything that floated along. To everyone's surprise Kakashi had given Sakura the task of swimming in the river and throwing everything she came across ashore. After a slight protest of the pink-haired Kinoichi he had reminded her that her stamina definitely still needed improvement. Naruto doubted that was the only reason she was given that assignment after Sakura returned a few minutes later in a red bathing suit. Normally, any team would have been it all day and could still only be half done. Though some would be hard-pressed to admit, Naruto's cage bunshin had once again been a blessing for the entire team. They had finished in nearly four hours and therefore had time for another quick mission of doing some groceries for the elderly. Naruto grinned. He hated these stupid missions as much as any other genin, but he needed the money. If only they'd pay the teams for the individual work every member did. Dottie looked up at his watch and saw he still had two hours left before he would have his first cooking lesson with Hinata. He glanced at the schedule and headed back to the place where he had been practicing his fire two days ago. Once he arrived it wasn't long before streams of fire were flying over the river. Half an hour later a huge explosion followed. Water splashed everywhere, towered by a dome of fire, as Naruto's first grand fireball hit the surface of the streaming river. Naruto was ecstatic. He was closing up on his rival in record time. Soon the first stage of his plan would be complete. It wouldn't be long before the Achiha's ninjutsu held no secrets more to him. There was still a long way to go, but soon he would see the downfall of Achiha Sasuke. He hurried across the water, his clothes a little singed. 
That fire flower had been bigger than he had imagined. He had been careful not to put too much chakra in the technique, and it had still been nearly one and a half times the size of what he had seen Sasu throw at Kakashi during the last time they had spared against their sensei. He definitely had an edge over the idiot considering stamina and chakra reserves. But it wasn't enough. He remembered yesterday's training mission and the effect it had on his legs. No, he definitely needed to work on that. And as he entered the village over the water's surface again he saw just how to do it. Entering his apartment, he tossed his clothes in the basket and took a shower. He still had 15 minutes before Hinata would come over. Plenty of time, or so he thought. He was just shampooing his hair as he heard a knock on the door. Quickly wrapping a towel around his waist he opened up and stuck his head through the opening. Hinata. You're early Jinarito kun I, I didn't think why you old mind are you kidding? I don't mind at all. As a matter of fact I hate waiting for people. Come right in and make yourself at home. I'm just gonna finish up my shower. Be with you in 10 minutes. But that he hurried back to the bathroom, leaving Hinata by herself in the door opening. To say the girl was nervous was understatement. She had never even been in a boy's room before. Let alone being in her crush apartment. Carefully she put her first foot past the door, closed her eyes and breathed deeply before turning to close the door. The room was messier than Hinata had expected. Not that it was particularly messy, it was just that in the Hayuga mansion everything was perfectly ordered. She kinda liked it this way, it made you feel comfortable, like not everything had to be perfect all the time. Putting the bag of groceries on the table she felt the nervousness fade away, making place for curiosity. Quietly she moved towards the cupboards, intending to find out whatever she could about her crush, by going through his kitchen supplies. She couldn't help but giggle as the two first cabinets were filled with nothing but instant ramen cups. The third one revealed what must have been a month's supply of breakfast cereals. In a way she found it sad however. How could a person live on nothing but ramen and breakfast cereals? On the other hand she felt good that she was actually doing more good for him than she had initially imagined. Further investigation of the cupboards had turned up what looked like a brand new set of cooking utensils, chopsticks, an old bowl which he no doubt used for his breakfast and Raymond, and some cleaning objects. Looking at her watch, she noticed only three minutes had passed yet, plus she heard the water of the shower still running, so she still had some time to snoop around. The room itself seemed to be plastered with post-it notes of things to do. Some had dates on it of over four months ago. On the table she found a few pieces of paper which consisted of a training schedule and a bunch of side notes concerning it. She noticed it was packed full. Inaruto-kun is certainly pushing himself to the limit. Ill looking. Back at the schedule her heart jumped a beat when she noticed her name written at the current time, with a little smiley face behind it. The odd thing about the whole thing, though was that the side note seemed to be written in third person, yet the handwriting was definitely Naruto's. With newfound confidence Hanada headed for the screen that separated Naruto's bedroom from the kitchen. Silently she opened it up and found herself blushing at the sight of Naruto's pajamas on his unmade bed. Aside from a few lingering Raymond cups and the messy desk the room was fairly tidy. Then she noticed some pieces of broken glass spread around an upside down picture frame. A single corner of it was heavily dented and the frame was coming apart as pieces no longer fit. Carefully she picked it up and saw it was his team picture. Hinata was shocked to view the extent of Naruto's problems with his team. Every ninja she knew cherished their first team picture. Even her father had the picture of the three-man Hayuga team he had worked with framed and sitting on his desk. The sudden lack of the sound of running water abruptly left her out of the memory. Quickly she put the picture back on the floor and hurried back to the kitchen. Very uncharacteristically she slided on her knees, bending backwards to fit underneath the table and end in front of the kitchen cabinet that contained Naruto's pots. She managed to get a hold of the big walk she needed right as Naruto emerged from his bathroom wearing a white t-shirt and a simple black boxer short. It wasn't long before the two genin were idly chattering away, while Naruto admired Hinata's cooking skill, and was even taking notes on how to cut everything up, and went to add what dot Hinata was surprised about this, as she had always known her golden-haired crush to be enthusiastic about new things of interest, she had never seen him taking notes about anything. You never used to do that she remarked as she added the pieces of meat to the wok. Do what take notes on things oh dot dot well, this just helps me remember things better. There's been a lot of things I've been learning lately. Just look at them as study notes he smiled while writing the time and way Hinata added the meat to the big pot. What kind of things I'm afraid that if I tell you I will have to kill you. And since killing the heiress to the Hyuga clan probably isn't a very smart thing to do if I want to become Hokage, I'd rather not tell he winked at her. She smiled. What are you up to Naruto-kun's secret mission was his only answer as he raised his finger up to his mouth indicating silence and blinked an eye. Is that why you're training so hard how do you know about that, he exclaimed in a panicked fashion yo your training schedule is laying on the table she squeaked apologetically. Oh he scratched behind his head, another dead giveaway how he sighed. 
Just don't tell anyone about my training, please seeing the disappointed look on his face, Hinata couldn't refuse his request. Of course, Naruto-kun. But why don't you want anyone to know of your hard work oh, it's not that I don't want them to know, I just don't want them to know yet demo, isn't it bad for your teamwork if your partners don't know what your true capabilities are now, how good does teamwork need to be to weed some gardens or clean a few beaches demo haha, <laughs> don't worry about it Hinata. In a few weeks it's all gonna be over I I just don't want to see you get in trouble, Naruto-kun. Sakura was just finishing up on her last lap around training field 48. She was heavily bruised and at the end of her breath when she finally arrived at the exit, yet she was smiling. Today was a day full of good training. Although at first she had stared daggers at her sensei when he told her to swim in the river for the duration of the mission, after a few minutes she had understood his reasons. Swimming in the river's stream had seriously worn out her legs, yet kept her muscles cooled down, so she didn't feel stiff afterwards. After finishing the day's last mission she had followed her sensei's advice and headed straight for training field 48. Eating up the dummies had been particularly satisfying today as she wasn't depressed like yesterday, but rather ticked off at Naruto's recent comments in the morning. Somehow she couldn't shake it off as easily as the usual stupid things he often had distracted her more than she was aware of at first, she had been given a couple of nasty bruises before she finally admitted it to herself. Why can't I answer that damn question about him? I mean there's gotta be some good reasons I could come up with. Sasuke's definitely the hottest guy in town, he's smart, number one rookie of the year, and come on there's gotta be more to it than that. I'm not that shallow. Am I no I'm not. I just can't come up with it right now. Besides I'm sure Sasuke likes me. Why am I so sure about that again? Sai maybe Naruto's right. I mean he never talks to me, doesn't smile or looks at me funny. But he's so gorgeous. Sometimes I would just want to rip his clothes of Anaki, enough with the hormones. Dot dot but what if that's just all there's to it or if Naruto's just playing with our heads? What was that between him and Sasuke again this morning? I haven't told anyone what happened, but plan to do so again from now on what happened yesterday, will never happen again coming from my voice, that could mean anything from them having adventures on that hill yesterday to so Naruto won yesterday. Has he really changed so much? On the way home she decided to drop by the library to grab a new one, so she could start practicing for the rest of the day. She found a suitable one in a few minutes. Spending a great deal of her time in the library she knew the place almost as the back of her hand, and most of the clerics knew her. Kazumo greeted her from the moment he'd seen her. Dataheo. Baruna-san, I expected you here three hours ago hi Kazumo. I was training a little on my tie in area 48 ow, so I don't have to smack up any of your teammates for giving you those bruises you got on you, there she giggled as Kazumo did some mock stances. No no, I'm a big girl, I can take care of myself. Besides it's all part of training just as well, I don't think I would have had much of a chance against Ichihasama anyway. Hey, you tell him to come by again anytime, okay. As you sure know we've got lots of useful laying around here, plus if he comes around here more, maybe he'll get us some more visitors Sasu came by the library sure, he sometimes comes early in the morning. Sometimes that Yuzumaki kid comes along Sasu and Naruto. Together at the library maybe I was closer with the adventures after all yes. Something wrong, Sakura-san ah. Uh. Oh no, nothing. It's just that I gotta go. See you next time Kazumo. Something's definitely going on here. Sasuke would never hang out with Naruto on his own or for no reason. They're either planning something or Naruto is up to his tricks again. And the way he's been acting lately I'm betting on the last one. How could that have beaten me? Sasuke pondered as he performed another back kick to the training dummy, followed by a dragon kick to another one to finally perform a backflip and plant two kunai in the back of the third one. If I can't even beat Naruto in a stupid little race, how am I supposed to ever kill him the dark image of his brother flashing before his eyes? What's up with that? Three weeks ago you couldn't get him to shut his mouth, now he's suddenly this quiet philosopher. It's been days since he said or did anything stupid, and he's been staring at me an awful lot during training lately. Could it be that he's learning from me? He can't blame him. Maybe there's some hope for him left he grinned as he proceeded to launch another beating on the dummies. It was just a stupid little race anyway. After walking Hinata back to her family's mansion, Naruto dashed back home, determined to use every last bit of his day. At home Naruto started going over the abundant collection of notes on the Ichiha's Tajutsu that his daily morning clones had been keeping. Studying every little detail, imagining the moves in his head and playing back all the fights he had ever witnessed or had with the Ichiha, he began cross-referencing in his mind. Looking back at everything in slow motion and seeing some of the moves written down in a nice analyzed fashion, he began to notice some basics. The style seemed to be based around distraction and guiding the opponent into the position you want him to. 
It seemed to be making more sense now. The way he often occupied his opponent's hands by striking some fast, but easily blockable punches or kicks to finally land a hard blow when they couldn't see it coming or react to it on time. That would make sense. The Sharingan has the ability to predict an opponent's movement, so if the Tajutsu style could make you guide your opponent's movements, it would be all that more effective and easily exploitable for them, this does make some things more troublesome. Maybe Naruto should have gone straight to bed after arriving home, since it seemed troublesome things had a knack of appearing in group. Maybe Naruto should have gone straight to bed after arriving home, since it seemed troublesome things had a knack of appearing in groups. There was a knock on his door. Kakashi can't say what he want about me losing my people skills, but I'm seeming to get an increasing amount of late night visitors. Opening the door he recognized a flurry of pink hair before he saw Sakura's face. Maybe he should have kept looking at her hair, because her face looked much less inviting. His own eyebrows dropped to a lower position as well. Hi Naruto, can I come in well, from the expression on your face he'll say that's probably a bad idea, but you don't look as if you're gonna take no for an answer either, would you know give me 5 seconds he said as he closed the door again and created a few cage bunchen to clean his living room from all the scrolls, notes and papers that had anything to do with his own mission. Com. And if anything Sakura's face had become darker. It probably had something to do with having the door shut in her face. What was that all about? Can't a guy clean his place a bit before he receives any guests? It still looks messy in here. She snorted arrogantly. You should have seen it five seconds ago. Forgetting the current conversation, Sakura sat down on a chair and leaned back with a grin. You know, I heard something interesting today. What's that? It seems you and Sasuke have been visiting the library together, maybe. So, what do you mean so? The two of you wouldn't hang around together willingly unless Konoha was coming to an end, Yuhu. And 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 are you gonna tell me what's going on, or should I go ask Sasuke who told you Naruto asked without giving a moment of dot I've got a reliable source oh, I bet you do, don't you, you little book brain. He teased with a big sarcastic smile, silently wishing he hadn't sat down himself, so he could've pet her on the head like a good little doggy dot shut up, idiot. I don't have to take that crap from you. Now tell me what you're doing or I'll report it report what exactly how about impersonating a fellow shinobi at an official institute. Identity theft. Fraud hmm, that sounds pretty serious, Sakura. Are you sure you can make him hard I've got a witness oh, you mean this guy Naruto now simply leaned back and formed his familiar ram seal, creating a perfect replica of the library. I can imagine how the lineup would be. Hand still in the ram seal, suddenly there was a row of copies of both him and Sasuke in the apartment. Next to the image of the Hokage appeared with his hand on the clone's shoulder. I take your time kid. Which was the pair that checked out the books and scrolls. I anything else now Sakura seemed a little set back. Naruto was ridiculing her and actually having a point. No, but even if I can't prove it's you, that would only lead to a deeper investigation, because someone would be going around imitating Kanoha Ninja. Naruto indeed knew that could be trouble, on the other hand, he knew this wasn't any time to back down and show doubt. You're still assuming I did something wrong. You see, I've got a library card too, you know in that case, I think Izumo will be real happy to know you've been fooling him into thinking you were friends with Sasuke Kono. That would mean I'll lose all that extra service, not to mention I'll probably lose my invitation to the annual book ball the blonde sarcastically acted with added dramatic motions. Don't think I won't do it and that there won't be consequences fine, whatever. Do what you want good, I will okay, but just know, I'm a lot better at this than you are what's that supposed to mean nothing, now piss off don't talk to me like that. She yelled as she jumped out of her chair to punch him in the face. He dropped under her arm and threw his body against her waist while grabbing her knees, causing her to fall over with him on top of her. He quickly pinned her down by sitting on her stomach and grabbing both her arms. You should really stop doing that. It's annoying and I'm not gonna keep taking a get of me you pervert that is not what you'd say if he sat on top of you. Promptly. He changed into Sasuke, including the serious look on his face. Sakura, are you sure you're ovulating? I still have to train to kill. Some guy, so unless you want to revive my clan, I don't have time to play. That's not funny. No, of course it's not. Do you see me smile? If you do, tell me, cause I don't have time for that either. Naruto changed back to himself. He's not like any of that. No. Okay, let me try again this time. He changed with a big cloud of ninja smoke and reappeared as a half naked Sasuke, lying with a single egg between Sakura's, cupping her face with one hand and holding her hand in the other. I love you, Sakura chan. I'm a fool for not seeing it sooner. I hope you can forgive me, he whispered gently in her ear. Sakura didn't say anything until Naruto undid the hinge. Now, that one had you going for a while, hadn't it? He grinned. Get off of me, Naruto. Now, she said with nothing but serious anger in her face. I got off of you quite a while ago, Sakura. Perhaps it's time you got off of him, he said as he stood up and walked to the door. Now, unless there's anything else you want of me, get out of my house. With it, he closed the door behind her, leaving the angry Kinoichi alone in the streets. 
Now, where was I? Oh yeah, it's a Hatai Jutsu style. Hmm, this could take a while. Well, what did I expect? I knew I couldn't pull this off overnight, and it was about time I learned a decent style anyway. Besides, it'll give me some time to think about that damn Sharingan. I'll start on it tomorrow, I'll stick to chakra control for the rest of the day the floating leaf method had now almost become natural to Naruto, so the rest of the evening he had practiced it in combination with the walking on walls technique, over the safety of his bed. 5 AM, Kanaha, Eastern Gate, Gordbus number 5. Hey Mabisu, die you see that no, what someone on the wall at 3 o'clock I don't see nothing on the inside. He's coming this way who is it can't tell, it's not that rock hitter guy anyway. They'll be here by now it better not be, Hokage-sama forbid them, because they were creating structural damage he's wearing orange baka. What kind of ninja wears orange unless he has a deathwish hey, I know him. It's that Yuzumaki kid. What the hell is he doing here probably training, what else he defiled the Hokage monument. I bet he's not up to any good here either bah. That's over a year ago, he hasn't done anything since he has perverted the Hokage's grandson you, never liked the little kid to begin with anyway he stole the forbidden, scroll the case report reads he was tricked by Mizuki I'm keeping an eye on him, he's up to something alright Baka Mabisu exclaimed, as he slapped his colleague against the back of his head, now get back to work. Training had been a blast today, as Kakashi had been happy with their swift missions yesterday, and saw no problem having Sasuke and Naruto spar, well he did some taijutsu training with Sakura dot this is excellent. I've got at least 10 minutes to completely beat him to a bloody pulp without Kakashi to interfere. But then again, I might as well do some actual training with this opportunity, and see how much I can predict his movements the blonde grinned to himself, which gave him a strange look from Sasuke dot what are you smiling about? Thinking how much you're gonna enjoy getting, don't know, I was actually imagining what piece of your pride and arrogance I'm gonna strip you of today. And how by the end of the week you'll be nothing more than a sad mixture of fear, hatred and embarrassment that had the desired effect the blonde was going for. Sasuke immediately opened up with a grand fireball, giving Naruto the perfect chance to hide from view, using a combination of Kawarimi and Cage Bunshin. Another advantage of his improved chakra control was that it gave him the ability to make his clones a further distance away. Now while his clone was fighting Sasuke, Naruto himself was getting comfortable in the canopy of a nearby tree, a slight hinge had made his clothes take on a more natural look, blending him better with the leaves. All he had to do now was sit back, relax and keep the Achiha from facing his direction a lot. Today he felt like playing the Achiha for all he was worth. About 4 minutes had passed, and Naruto was at about his 14th clone right now. That included the two extra he created to take note of the Achiha's moves during the entire battle. This was worth gold, he couldn't wait to try out everything he was seeing right now. He had been trying to orchestrate the battle, so that Sasuke showed him exactly what he needed to see. The absolute basics of the Achiha fighting style, gradually building up to more complicated maneuvers. This was the beauty of Cage Bunshin combined with great chakra control and an enormous amount of chakra and stamina. Occasionally, when he thought he recognized a move from his notes, he would have a clone try to hit him where he theoretically figured there to be a weakness, he was often right. Naruto however never had been one to sit down however, and couldn't resist getting back in there, so he could finish the job himself. This was getting on Sasuke's nerves. It seemed like Naruto was everywhere, well it was always like that, but normally he used to get at least the occasional shot at him. Right now he had hit and hurt nothing but clones or logs, well he was already sporting several bruises and panting. At a certain point in the fight the idiot had even used Kawarimi with a kunai, giving Sasuke a nasty cut on his lower arm. It wasn't that the clones were any trouble for him, the most basic moves and combos seemed to do the trick just nicely, which made it strange since Naruto usually gave him a better fight than this, but then again, he couldn't remember hitting Naruto for sure in this fight. Okay guys, that's enough Kakashi appeared on the stage, reading his familiar orange book. Demo, Kakashi sensei, I was just about to finish him off Kakashi had walked up to them and laid his hand on Naruto's shoulder, I saw Naruto, you were great. Not a single hit on you huh? However, you did use a huge amount of chakra, so tone that down, unless you want to fall down on the battlefield, because of chakra exhaustion. Naruto smiled and dispelled his clones in a puff of smoke, leaving the field empty except for some stray kunai, and the usual leaves, sticks and stones. Kakashi looks sternly at Sasuke, I'm disappointed in you Sasuke. You underestimate your opponent and don't think defensively enough. Even with the Sharingan you couldn't evade the hits of such weak clones, well you could destroy them so easily. You should have known something was going, didn't look underneath, and generally you poof suck. Kakashi had suddenly changed into another Naruto and uppercutted Sasuke a few yards across the training area. Upon landing he was jumped by four clones who grabbed his hands and legs, preventing him from using seals or struggling free, each clone holding a kunai at a vital point on his body. What was it you said about never reaching your level? 
Naruto said as he casually strolled into Sasuke's view. Only a death glare was his answer. Naruto. That's enough. The real Kakashi had meanwhile chosen this as an appropriate moment to come and check on his students. He was surprised at the outcome, but couldn't deny the brilliant finish Naruto had made. Nice. Dab, although your tactic was a little borderline, what? He gets to spit fire at me, but I can't use a simple henge, hmm, You have a point there, ha. Huh? See. Victory is mine, fair and square he shouted as threw a grin at his teammate. Meanwhile, no one had noticed two squirrels making their way into Naruto's backpack to only disappear in a cloud of smoke. I didn't hit him once. I didn't hit him once. The idiot was just playing with me. How? Did he continuously keep using Kawarimi with his clones? He couldn't have just been hiding somewhere, he always needed to be close to his goddamn cage bunchons to create them. He sucks at, so henge to hide somewhere in the middle of the area. No, I should have picked that up with my Sharingan. And why can't I copy that it's only one hand seal, half the time he doesn't even seem to use it anymore. And how can he make so many? It's a freaking down in level technique which Kakashi doesn't even use unless he absolutely has to, so it should use a huge amount of chakra. Rarg. That's the second time this week this happens. And this wasn't some stupid race, he had the chance to actually kill me with a grunt, the Achiha lifted himself off the ground, HMPF, since when did you start to think things through, dope. He mumbled as he put his hands back in his pockets. Only a few days before you started to lose, can it be you too? That's an order. Kakashi sighed and seemed to think things over for a moment. Another heavy breath escaped his nose before continuing. Okay, here's the deal. I'm not supposed to be telling you this, but in less than two weeks, the Chunin exams are held here in Kanoha. Instantly, the two boys were silenced and listening to their sensei with full attention. Thought that would get your attention, he said as he continued reading his book. Well, well, what, what? about the exams oh. I was just thinking about registering you three, but if teamwork has stumbled to this level, you three won't even survive, so never mind both boys gave a stern look to one another. Eventually Naruto looked back up to his sensei, isn't there any other way to become Chuanin? You just had to open up your big mouth, didn't you what exactly did he say this time hey, I can't help it, none of you has a sense of humor. Besides, you weren't exactly looking thrilled either at least, I kept my mouth shut about it yeah, well you always keep shut your mouth, so you didn't exactly help there will one of you tell me what the hell this is all about Chunin exam both of them replied at the same time. What two Weeks from now, the biannual Chunin exam will be held in Kanohe yeah, and if we're good boys and girls, he'll think about registering us you think he's serious I think so well, if he's thinking of just dangling a candy in front of us to see if we'll do a trick, he'll be in for a nasty surprise do, you guys think we're ready I am Sasu kun yes well, if you and Kakashi sensei say so okay. So we finally all agree on one thing. Now can we please get on with climbing this stupid rock. I've got other stuff to do today. That being said the three continued to climb Mount Ashurnabibi, their only protection a three-foot rope that attached them to their teammates. Two weeks until the Chunin exams he can't wait. Man that felt good today. Ow yeah, that extra chakra control rocks. I could have beat him while eating some ramen. Am I gonna kick face when I'm finished learning an actual taijutsu style or what? And maybe just a pinch more chakra control, and I'll be creating clones by just blinking my eyes. Man, this is gonna rock. Uh huh, maybe after this is over, I'll develop my own taijutsu style cages and there's a point. What's a chia's style called? The K-Mamakas, a relatively new style, a mere 120 years old, was developed by Ichiha Mantaro, shortly after the Ichiha Rebellion. The style's basic principle is to let the user control his opponent's movements by use of natural reactions. It's mainly an offensive style since the Sharingan already gave such a defensive bonus. It is a closed technique, only four non-clan members have ever been reported to have learned, three of which disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The clan claims the technique requires the user to possess a Sharingan, but that claim has been disputed. I. So Naruto learned later that evening, after four hours of rigorous training at the riverside. Thank god that wasn't all for nothing, then he smiled as he wiped the sweat off his brow, laid the book back aside and stripped down to get a shower. Oh, look what the cat dragged in. Have you decided to honor us with a visit today after all the old man growled, looking sternly while waving his spoon around. Dotichir. You break my heart. What have I done to deserve this Naruto overacted, making him look like a soap opera actor. Where were you yesterday? I was striking a dramatic pause on an important mission. Saving the daimyo's brother's daughter's cousin's poolman from a band of hungry wolves and the men that hunted the wolves for their furry tails in Yunchuri Achira, whistled between his teeth for the impressive little monologue, but still replies liar. I know you were having dinner with that Hyuga girl looking away from him, holding his heart as if broken. I swear Ichira, it didn't mean anything. The old man shook his head a little as to say he found it a little touchy, but he would go along with it. Do you swear that's all there is to it? Yes. Yes, I swear. 
Once I go steady with her and won't have to be romantic to get some nookie I'll never do it again. Achira's daughter AM now couldn't hold her laughter anymore. She and two other regulars who had at least come to bear with the presence of Naruto burst out in laughter, the old man and Naruto following in suit. After the place had calmed down a little and Naruto had taken up his usual place at the counter, the Achira leaned up to him and mumbled quietly, so, you thinking about it dot what? No, of course not, Hinata's a friend then why not Ichira, I'm 12, don't you think that's a little young Baka twak this last reply actually earned him the wrath of the great and all-powerful mace of Raymond. It was only once or twice every month that he beat the blonde over his head with his spoon, since he had to take another one afterwards and clean the instrument of judgment by boiling it in water. Here, The lessons of the great and all-powerful mace of Raymond, for its wise counsel, will protect you in life and see to it that by the end of the day, you'll always still have money to come by more delicious and sustaining Raymond. The first lesson of the great and all-powerful mace of Raymond tells you not to be such a pervert, you hormone-controlled youngster sorry, thought you meant that the second lesson Achira cutting him off, probably fearing that if he didn't do this right now, he would forget where he was going, and he hated being called senile by the kid tells you that you should reconsider that view. Ninjas are not renowned for their enormous lifespan, so they should get busy as soon as possible, if they want to settle and raise some little ninja of their own the wielder of the great and all-powerful mace of Raymond winked at him. But she's a Hayuga, I can't just go out with her why, not the Hayuga are probably the most powerful, stoic and conservative clan in Kanoha. Hinata is the main heir. I'd be like a bum asking for a date with a princess, it'll probably have to beat a small honor guard in the form of her uncle or cousin or something. You're right. You do look like a bum yeah, but I could always go change first, before taking care of all that other stuff into what? I'll swear if you've been wearing that same jumpsuit ever since you grew taller than that bar stool you're sitting on but I change clothes nearly every day what? You got another six of those laying around the house 36 more likely, Nani yeah there once was this garbage container at the gap, right? That dope beat me. How, no, why is this happening? First that stupid little race and now this. What's going on? What's wrong with me? No. What's with this sudden intellectual growth spurt from Naruto? First he gets all quiet and contemplated, now he has suddenly a wise guy. None of this makes sense. And now there's suddenly an exam. What else can go wrong? Sasu questioned himself while he was training his kunai throwing. It'll investigate how Naruto got his shit together so fast, but now with a Chunin exam coming up, I really don't have any time to waste focusing on that idiot. I need to pick up on my own training. God damn it, Itachi, if it wasn't for you, it'll have a decent sparring partner right now. Okay, now that he beat Sasuke, he'll probably calm down a little. He proved his point, got to effectively humiliate Sasuke, and he's got the Chunin exam to worry about. Right now, I'm more worried about the way he's using Cage Bunshin. I've heard of a few who used to specialize in fighting with them, but this is getting ridiculous. On a good day I can only make 30 of those, he must have used almost 40 or something in that fight by the raid I saw him going, and he didn't even look slightly tired. I'll think I'll inform Hokage-sama of this later tonight. Right now those two should have a fairly good chance of surviving the exam, so I'll focus a little more on Pinky. Man, she sucks so much sometimes I just feel like punching her in the face. I swear, sometimes I wish I never took this job. Damn kids drive me crazy. Can't even concentrate anymore, where was I? Oh yeah, he gently squeezed her fur and. Two weeks till the tune-in exam I don't know if I'm ready, Sasuke and even Naruto look so eager and ready, but I just don't know. I trust Kakashi-sensei if he says we are ready, I believe we are, I just don't know if I am. Well, I've got two weeks to prepare and find out, so let's get to it. The pink-haired Kanoichi thought as she started her last lap around training Area 58. Saratobi Sandane didn't just have the most pleasant day, first he received a report from the Anbu of some recent sightings of his former student, now S-class missing Nin, Arachimaru in the Hidden Sand Village, and afterwards he had been negotiating with some diplomats from the recently erected Hidden Sound Village, concerning their entrance to the Chunin exams. Right now he was just happy relaxing, smoking a pipe on the floor of the Hokage Monument. Life could be grand at times like this, even though something in the back of his head was telling him something wasn't feeling right. Hokage Sama Siratobis. Head dropped down in disappointment for a fraction of a second, he had been hoping to head over to Konohamaru after this, training with his grandson, always was a joy to him. He had surely grown up a lot after meeting with Naruto. Heh, he has to look up to that kid sometime soon as well. It's funny how all such thought could occur in such a short time as just nodding your head and turning to say yes, Kakashi I'm sorry, but there's something I wish to discuss with you, sir is it urgent, dangerous and or classified kinda, it might be, and not yet, if ever. But mainly it's just interesting or irregular believe me Kakashi, if I knew when Jiraiya is gonna publish his new book, I would tell you sir, if it was that I would've just answered yes, only for the author, and I hope not haha. 
Okay then Kakashi, what can I do for you well Hokage, it's just that I've noticed something peculiar about the way Naruto has been making his cage bunshin lately oh, and what's that it appears as if he can make them effortlessly, with any amount of chakra he chooses are you sure of this no. But I can say that for the last few days he has been using at least 45 clones a day at team training or missions alone. Earlier today he used about that number when sparring with his teammate Ichiha Sasuke, and he didn't even look tired afterwards. I even believe he uses them as training dummies for his Taijutsu 45 huh? At once once during a beach cleaning mission. Frankly sir, the kid has a point asking for a more individual wage for the genin on a team Saratobi, didn't even hear our show care for the latest part of Kakashi's response, instead he appeared deep in thought. There could be a number of explanations for this new talent of Narjuo that he had just described. The Kaiubi and the seal alone could offer dozens of them. Saratobi had studied the seal for years, the intricate designs, the never-ending flow of chakra it possessed, and on the other hand contained, the complete contract with the kami of death that was hidden underneath, the gateway system that offered the possibility for both chakras to mix, yet separating both minds and souls. Ah, in the beginning the third used to keep a small red notebook about his discoveries and conclusions about the Shaiki Fujin, but by now it had grown out to the size of an entire omnibus. Ever since he had started studying it, he no longer listened to his nickname, the professor as he felt he himself could have learned a lot from his own student student. Finally he concluded. Kakashi, for now you are to regard everything you just told me as an S-class secret. Sent Naruto to my office first thing in the morning. If he's any later than 8.30 I'll give you a completely new excuse for your lateness Kakashi nodded, and with a bow he once again disappeared. It didn't take the silver-haired long to find his subordinate. Since he didn't appear to be at his apartment, he just headed for Ichiraku and found Naruto in conversation with the owner. You know if everything works out between the two of you, I might be able to raise my prices a little, earn enough to expand this place, and then I'll finally be able to bring in some new flavors and get the right spices for everything that's an interesting point you make, but how would I taste all those delicious new recipes with my head hanging above her dad's fireplace well? I get more clients when you're gone anyway, so it's a win-win situation for me, either way I'll get you your fancy client soon enough. When I win the Chunin exam, I'll show everyone Ichiraku's Raymond is the only true breakfast of champions Ichira, held his hand up to his chin, and struck a thinking pose, and then spoke, could we get a backup plan, just in case I would consider that a wise option as well he. Spoke as he finally made his presence known. Naruto narrowed his eyes slightly before swallowing his beef Raymond and replying. Why? I just beat the village favorite this morning without a single scratch or sweat drop, didn't I you finally got to beat Sasuke. Why didn't you tell me turning back to his friend Naruto just smiled and said they'd talk later, making an eye motion towards his sensei, paid his bill and walked off with Kakashi. I'm curious about that too Naruto, little than a month ago you would have told half the village by now and who would have cared or believed me if I had that might be a good point, but I don't buy it then how about that it was just a sparring match, so it was no big deal true as well, but not the real answer again, is it if you're so smart. Then why don't you tell me I guess I could come up with a few theories, like beating him with an unfair high level technique like cage bunchin, or cause you tricked him into letting his guard down let's get this straight there was nothing wrong with the way I beat him. He's got eyes that see underneath the underneath without looking, it's not my fault he's too stupid and arrogant to even open them well, it couldn't have been a lesson in humility if you're not even humiliating him anywhere. And I really doubt that you're so into teamwork that sudden maybe the real question is, why do you care so much about me telling or not? Scared if I prove the Ichiha or the Sharingan not to be so all powerful. Or just angry I beat your little precious pupil and want to nitpick about it I care because you are a part of my team. So it's necessary for me as your instructor to get a decent idea of your thinking pattern and your abilities in order for me to make decisions that can mean the difference between life and death you know my abilities and as for my thinking pattern, not even I know what I will think of next and if I did. Chances that I'd tell you are at an all time low then how about telling the Hokage as if you'll send me to the Hokage over nothing but being rooted most. If there was any law against it the entire Inuzuka clan would have been banned from Kanoha centuries ago think what you want, you are expected in his office at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and with that he disappeared once again. Naruto paused a second to take in and consider what just happened, a moment later a loud hell was heard throughout the streets right before Naruto's form was replaced by nothing but smoke and air. The next day, 7.59 am, Hokage office. I'm in Hokage Oji-sama. Kakashi said you wanted to see me hello Naruto. I assume you know why you are here the old man asked in his casual tone. Naruto's heartbeat suddenly gained a couple of beats per minute. Oh shit, this could be bad. What should I do now? I didn't do it. Nobody saw me do it. You can't prove a thing. They started it. Wait a second. I actually don't know this time not. Really sir odd then that you had to think about it that long. Hmm. 
Anyway you are here because of a rather interesting report had a Kakashi brought me oh shit, here it comes. He's booting me off the team. Hell, I should have just kicked his face every day without talking all that shit to Kakashi dotted. Appears you have gained quite some talent in the use of cage bunch and I guess so here we go Dotty tells me you easily create up to 40 each day this is just about my cage bunch and. Oh my god. Thank you. I'm gonna kill you Kakashi dot actually that's only counting team training and missions. I can easily pull a 40 a minute for a few hours on end Naruto, 40 a day is a very extraordinary feat already. There's no need to boast, the Hokage smile dot I'm not. Ever since I got some decent chakra control and I could make them on the fly, I've been using them as practice dummies for my taijutsu this silenced the old man for a few seconds. He now understood what Kakashi meant when he said he could create them effortlessly. Naruto, are you telling me you use a high class level ninjutsu for hours on end and for nothing more than a replacement of the practice dummy well, yeah. I mean, why not? They're cheaper than wood, you can set them down anywhere easily, and they actually give you some reactions or even pointers amazing. But, what did you mean when you said you can make them on the fly I meant since I don't need to use any seals for them anymore this actually caused the Hokage to raise his eyebrows and choke on his own saliva for a while. He was definitely getting too old for this job. Sorry. That's just very dot dot unusual. Would you care to demonstrate that sure? Naruto held his hands away from his body, all of his fingers outstretched, and without a word or gesture, a clone suddenly appeared at his both sides. Very unusual indeed. Naruto, keep them there for a moment, pressing a finger on the intercom, he asked his secretary if he ashi had already arrived. Moments later a tall, pale man with long dark brown hair, wearing a traditional $20,000 kimono and lacking any emotion on his face, entered the room. Naruto, I'd like you to meet H. Hyuga Hiyashi, head of the Hyuga main house, user and protector of the Byakugan, and victor in combat over the former Mizukage. Naruto, ended with a deep and formal bow. Saratobi was actually getting a little annoyed. Held only spent about 10 minutes with the kid now, and this was the third surprise already. He hadn't ever seen Naruto show this much etiquette or respect, ever. He had actually expected him to just wave and say hi, pale guy, or something. Kanoha's most unpredictable ninja showed true to his title once again. The Ashi however acted like the same old stoic he always was. You had sent for me, Hokage-sama yes Hyuga-sama. I'm sure you've heard of Yuzumaki Naruto. I'd like you to take a look at him and tell me if there's anything off with his chakra flow surely Hokage-sama, you could have called for any Hyuga to perform such a simple request yes, but I needed your absolute discretion and authority on this if you two are talking about Kaiubi or the seal, by all means do so freely. If there's any chance of something going wrong inside my body, he will like to know about myself as well so, he knows now yes, he does. Now could you please check him and his clones for any demonic chakra that might have leaked through, besides the normal trickling that should occur every few seconds high, Hokage-sama well he ashi checked him and his clones for any irregularities, Naruto suddenly asked the Hokage normal trickling yes, the seal was apparently designed for your and Kaiubi's chakra to mix. I'm not sure why, maybe to prevent a buildup, or to keep your your chakra system adapted to the demons, in order to build up your resistance or, maybe the Yande messed up I don't think that's the case with Naruto. It's been that way since you were born and you don't look like you're having any ill effect so far. So have a little faith in our previous village leader Hokage, there's something here that wasn't included in your description, or the previous report my father made 12 years ago. What is it he ashi a buffer of some sort, seems to have formed outside the area of the seal. It's like a new thicker pathway has formed that catches the trickling demon chakra and releases it to the rest of his system in a more steady flow. The amount of demon chakra that's being released however is also far greater than the one reported earlier as well you said, you had been training your chakra control, Naruto well everybody told me that was supposed to be a good thing Naruto half asked dot it's alright. I suspect the increased quantity of Kaiubi chakra is another aspect of the seal. I think it will continue to increase as your own chakra pathways grow stronger and more resistant. This new buffer, however, is something I can't explain. Then again he ashi, are there any other unusual chakra pathways in Naruto after several moments of critical inspection, during which Naruto actually felt pretty much awkward, he ashi answered there were three interloping pathways that seemed a little unstable. These pathways however looked slightly weaker than those in the rest of his body. As if they were still developing, like those of a newborn. Naruto, is there anything else you can do on the flight to basic academy jutsus? So far, he ashi not comprehending exactly what the two meant by that considered it none of his business. This was the Hokage after all, if it was for his ears, he would be told. There is just one more thing. These two on the sides are cage bunshin, correct, correct, he ashi, but they are not regular cage bunshin. I presume, how do you know, he ashi sama, their chakra levels are significantly lower. 
Bo regular cage bunshin would have divided Uzumaki's chakra up evenly amongst the three, right now these two barely register as genin, while his chakra levels are at the average right now well, they were only for demonstration purposes the boy apologized, I didn't know what you wanted with them how, do you mean Naruto? You can determine their strength as well I never thought about that, really. But I can choose how much chakra to put in the technique and how many clones I want now. Took me quite a while though, but I always thought it was stupid to sacrifice half of my chakra for just a decoy that can only take one hit before disappearing good, good. Hi Uga-sama, you are free to go. My sincerest thanks for seeing me on such short notice very well. Hokage-sama. Yuzumaki Hiyashi gave a short nod to Naruto before being on his way. I think he likes you the old man smiled when the door closed. You think a month ago, you would have probably cracked a joke about him checking you out or something. Is Ichira actually right about you, and Hinata what do yo what is he it's none of your business old man haha. <laughs> You're right. I just wanted to see your reaction. Now, about your newly discovered talent. What we know so far is you've developed four new chakra pathways, one acting as a buffer for Kaiubi's excess chakra that's being mixed with your own. Then there are the three jutsus you're able to perform without any seals. I'm pretty sure you've put two and two together yourself already I might. Demo isn't it impossible to grow new chakra pathways after birth well informed, Naruto. Yes it is. Just like it's supposed to be impossible to perform cage bunshin without seals, or choosing how much chakra to put into that technique what about Henjur Kawarimi same thing. All three are supposed to be one hand seal techniques. And yet here you are, pulling of both feats that are deemed impossible in the ninja world you think it can have anything to do with the Kaiubi possible. However, the seal seems to be working like it should. So his influence should be minimal. It could be that the continuous mixing of your chakras has affected the working of your inner coil system somehow, but if that were the case, I think there should have been some more drastic changes by now. No, I think we can ignore the Kaiubi factor for the most part. So that leaves us with only one option, doesn't it you think I have a bloodline I think you might have one. However, it's too soon to tell really. There's also the problem that I've never heard of a clan with such a flexible chakra system or one that didn't need to use seals. Right now it's all just speculation, but I'll be sure to look into it the old man lurked at his pipe another time. Naruto didn't notice the slight shaking of his hands, since he was too busy thinking about the new possibilities that were now opening up to him. Him, Naruto, have you told anyone of these new abilities? No, I never thought it was anything special. I've seen plenty of people without hand seals before. So I just figured everybody with the proper control could pull it off good, good. I suggest you keep it that way. There's no telling what certain people would do to gain those abilities high, Hokujoji sama after Naruto had left his office, the leaf cage immediately started writing a letter to one of his former students. Possible Okugai Suken, discovered dot the Hokage figured there wouldn't be any other words necessary. If this didn't bring the toad pervert back to Konoha, nothing would. I'm supposed to write I don't own Naruto or anything related to it him somewhere, aren't I well I don't. Think I might own a Chira now though. Like he's ever gonna make any money with that demon kid always there chasing off all the customers. Meh, I could always make his daughter a hot piece of 2D, hand-drawn, animated as man I need a life partner. The day had been dark, cold and mainly wet. The gates of heaven had been open during the entire day, but that hadn't stopped Team 7 from training. It didn't encourage any sane ninja from training outside though. True, Kanoha didn't have many of those, but after 16 o'clock most training areas had been empty nonetheless. Naruto had been keeping himself busy warming up his apartment using a multitude of shadow clones, breathing a steady amount of fire from their mouths, and training his chakra drill using a log of wood. Yet his main concern seemed to be if his roof would hold on till the end of the constant downpour. Paying a quick visit to the library to see if he could find out anything about the upcoming Chunin exam. He had left disappointed concluding that if there was any information regarding it, it wasn't open to mere genin. A sudden knock on his door woke him up from his daydream. Hinata. Before him stood the High Uga heiress, future head of the most powerful clan in Kanoha, and carrier of a most potent bloodline. Yet no matter how hard he tried, all he could see was a soaked girl, her blue hair sticking to her face, and her pale lavender eyes almost staring into his soul. And for a moment they were just staring at each other. Naruto-kun that seemed to have awoken him out of his little trance. Don't just stand there. Come in, put that down, get out of those wet clothes, take a hot shower he shouted as he quickly took over her bag and pushed her in the direction of his bathroom. Anada didn't really have a chance to protest, and her brain barely had a chance to register the fact that there were several of Naruto's breathing fire in the living room. Em Naruto-kun she asked from behind the closed door. Yes I, didn't bring any dry clothes. I'll get you something from my closet and put yours in the dryer. Just tell me when it's safe to come in. 
After putting down a change of clothes, Naruto changed into something more comfortable and less sawdust ridden himself and cleaned up his kitchen and living room a bit until Hinata emerged wearing a loose black cotton t-shirt and blue baggy looking shorts. That's better. Now, do you need anything else? A sweater or want me to turn the heat up he grinned at the last comment, giving a quick glance at a nearby clone. No, I'm fine. Good, good. Now eh he started scratching his hair like he usually does when he wants to look like an idiot did we agree on meeting today? Cause I don't remember. No, I just hadn't seen you in a while. I thought you'd like at this point Hinata's voice had almost completely died away and she had started fidgeting with her fingers again. Are you kidding? You're so welcome here anytime you like. He exclaimed, hoping to boost her awful confidence a little. Anyway, it's my fault. I've been so busy training lately I just haven't been thinking about anything else. And I can't just come knocking on the door of the High Uga Manor late at night, can I? I don't think that'll be a good idea, no dot so, what's in the bag I thought we could make ch chicken yakitori. While the chicken was broiling in the oven, the two teens' conversation continued to a less pleasant subject. So, Hinata I take it your father doesn't know you hang around with me? No, but he doesn't seem to care much about what I do. Come on, I'm sure he cares. Who wouldn't care for his daughter? No, he doesn't. The fact that I'm Jen proves it he. Screamed somewhat uncharacteristically. Naruto looked a bit shocked at the sudden outburst, but mentally had to admit that he knew that under normal circumstances, no Hyuga heir would be allowed to become an ordinary Genin. Maybe it's a test. Naruto tried, you know, like Hyuga Nozomi, this time it was Hinata's time to look surprised. You know about Hyuga history, eh? Oh kid shouldn't be ignorant, righty dot, maybe he wants you to become strong on your own dot I don't think he really cares at all, anymore she said sadly and started fidgeting again dot well, it wouldn't hurt either way he tried and gently grabbed her index fingers dot and, no matter how cute that really is, you should really stop doing that. It makes you look weak and insecure dot maybe. I am she murmured quietly dot then, maybe we should see about that dot wh what do you mean simple. Tomorrow the two of us go sparring together dot d demo no buts. I refuse to believe you are as weak as you claim to be. The rest of the night was filled with idle chatter until Hinata noticed the time and hurried home. Naruto spent his evening reading back up on some of the Hyuga fighting style while sticking to the ceiling and went to bed. The next day after training, he met Hinata at the open spot in the forest where she usually ate with her team. Heyo Hinata, how are you? Heyo Naruto kun, I'm fine. Good. So, ready? Hi. That doesn't sound very ready to me, but we'll get that later. Right now I'm more worried about cutting our little training short by getting hit by your Jaiwiken, so let's keep it friendly and just stick to touch contact for now. After several minutes they had been gradually picking up each other's style. Right now Naruto felt he could dominate the match for now and purposely started showing an opening every once and again and didn't feel surprised when Hinata never tried exploiting one. After witnessing the same response several times he suddenly jumped several feet back and called a timeout. Anada, you're either playing with me or still afraid to hurt me with just your fingers. Now if it's the last I can tell you I've had a lot worse than that, otherwise start showing me what you really got already. After several minutes of fruitlessly trying to work up a little killer instinct, Hinata suddenly noticed a presence in the bushes. Are you sure it's her she fits the description, we should take her now they spoke a little too loud to go unnoticed. Naruto also seemed to have heard the intruders and broke off the spar with Hinata. Fearless as always he turned around and called out to the two men in hiding. Who goes there? Come out and show yourselves. The tall man with spiked black hair, wearing grey blue pants and a black vest, armed with a bow and a shorter but more bulking blonde man with a dark green shirt, black pants and dozens of kunai all over his body, stepped out from the bushes. There was no visible forehead protector on them, but from the way they moved, one could see they were definitely ninja. Ayuga Hinata. You are coming with us. She's not going anywhere with you two idiots. The tall one just looked down at Naruto in disgust. Kid, we can do this easy, or we can do this real easy. So why don't you run home to your mama and stay out of the grown up's business? This only resulted in Naruto dashing forward towards the unknown ninja, echoing a war cry. A few yards before reaching his goal, he jumped up, right fist held back to deliver a punch to his opponent. This one simply performed a high kick, hitting Naruto square in the stomach. A split second after impact however Naruto appeared to be nothing but a log of wood. The real Naruto was now standing about 15 yards in front of his opponents. Behind the smoke that came with the both genin heard a cry of pain, no doubt coming from the man who badly hit his toe against the replacement medium. Naruto cracked a smile, but noticed too late that the log of wood was rapidly coming his way. Not having enough time to dodge or block Naruto got struck in the head by a 20-pound log of wood traveling at gravity-defying speeds. He ended up lying unconscious next to a tree. Stop yelling, you crybaby. 
you'll attract every ninja in the vicinity. Mothurf goddamn, piece of hello. I think I broke my foot. Well, at least you got him the fat, one said chuckling, noticing the unmoving body of the blonde. Finish him off, he's seen our faces. I'll take care of her. The spiky haired man finished holding his foot and started limping towards Naruto's prone form, using his bow for support. Hinata had already taken up a defensive position between the blonde and their attackers. I can't let them kill Naruto kun. I dot dot I have to defend him. They're not taking him away from me, now dot I won't let you harm him she coldly said, imitating her father's fact stating tone dot yes you will cutie, now step out the way so my partner here can bash in your friend's skull dot try and make me she answered right before activating her by Akugan. The short man laughed a simple okay and immediately launched one of his kunai at her head. Hinata simply twisted her head out of its path without moving her feet an inch. Looking a little disappointed but wasting no time, the nin pulled out three more. Two of them headed for Hinata's torso, while a third one strayed away towards the direction of her fallen comrade. Without a thought she jumped towards the stray one, intercepted it, and deftly threw it at the black-haired nin, who had been making his way towards Naruto around her. Fuuk. Goddamn it Liang, she got me on the other foot I told you to keep quiet. Jesus, you're such a baby. This time however Hinata hadn't just been standing her ground and was dashing for the one she figured to be the long-range specialist of the two. This one drew two kunai in his hands to defend himself and engaged Hinata in close combat. The man turned out to be no pushover as he swiftly dodged or blocked all of Hinata's gentle fist strikes. But she had him on the defensive, and it would only be a matter of time before she would get in a hit. When that moment finally happened something unexpected happened. The bulk man suddenly erupted in a cloud of smoke, leaving only his belt of kunai behind. A lot of time to think about it didn't present itself as the other one had taken the opportunity to rid himself of the kunai in his foot and returned the weapon to Hinata once again. Dodging the projectile with a simple forward roll, she just got enough time to evade the downcoming bow of her opponent. Sticking to close combat she danced a few minutes with her opponent, who didn't seem to be hindered by any of his feet anymore. When she finally landed a clean hit this opponent as well seemed to erupt in smoke. When it cleared however something totally different than just his weapon was left behind. Na Naruto kun now that's dot dot how I want you to fight next time dot dot we spar Jen and told her between his heavy breathing while he was standing bent over, holding one hand over a painful kidney dot I'm so sorry. Are you alright I'm fine Hinata. Nothing to worry about. The important thing is how are you feeling I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to dot dot. To kick my ass. Naruto heaved, grinning. That Jaiwakan style maybe didn't look all that painful, but it sure packed a punch dot wy. She asked, coming to his side, helping him to stand upright. I wanted you to see your own true strength. Someone once told me real strength. Comes from protecting the people you care about. Putting his left hand on her right shoulder, slightly cupping her neck, he locked eyes with her. His electro blue eyes seemed to glow a little, while hers were still showing bewilderment. So thank you, Hinata, for protecting me, even against myself. He ended with a wink, but he had meant everything he said. Friends had always been a rare thing in Naruto's life, so there couldn't have been anything that made the young man happier than that there now was another person in his life that found him precious enough to fight for. Hinata couldn't help breaking eye contact and blushing. She fell back into her old habit of staring at the ground a few inches before her feet. This time however her line of sight at that particular area was blocked by Naruto's crotch. Quickly diverting her attention back to his face, she couldn't help noticing the obvious glow in his eyes, despite knowing that he had to be in a lot of pain. Any time, Naruto kun dot now, don't tell me you still think you're weak after that dot the demo, you must have been holding back dot only on the clones teamwork. You think it's easy to pretend to be unconscious and two other people at the same time while hiding it all from a byakugan. I was doing my absolute best trying to bash your head in with that stick though this was actually true. Although the boy had never been Naruto's weapon of choice, during their fight Naruto had pulled every trick he could think of out of his sleeve. Hinata looked slightly confused at the last comment, until she remembered to include the Naruto factor to his words, and smiled when she comprehended the true meaning behind them. Really you think I looked forward to this? He motioned towards his side. Thank you, Naruto kun. You welcome. Now, are you ready for another go but you're injured? Hey. It's gonna take a whole lot more than a single hit to take down Yuzumaki Naruto. They continued sparring for another hour, Hinata dominated most of the fights, like any Hayuga worth their salt would in close combat. Naruto wouldn't have been Naruto though if he hadn't been able to keep her on her toes, especially when he started incorporating some of the Ichiha fighting style in his moves. Regaining some of their strength back at Ichiraku's, the two agreed on continuing their joint training. Hinata still couldn't believe how strong she really was, and Naruto was just happy his new friend finally seemed to be a little more confident in her own abilities, even if it meant there was now a new person on the block that could hand him in a straight-time match. 
though it did give him the advantage of actually having a training partner whose mind he wasn't able to read or command. In the end it was a beneficial agreement for both parties, and even if Inada would someday outclass him by far, he could always raise the bar a little, with the help of some friendly neighboring shadows. After finishing his Yuzumaki special, saying goodbye to Hinata and another hour of practicing Keryu Endon, the last technique in the Book of Fire Jutsus, Naruto finally headed back to the library to return both books. Flashback. The morning after Sakura had honored him with a late night visit, Naruto wasted no time and immediately headed over to the semi public Shinobi Library of Konoha. Once there, he changed once more into the image of Sasuke and put on his most evil death glare before marching up to Kazumo and slamming the book down on his desk. We need to talk, eh? Certainly, Ichiha Sama, the librarian, gulped. Your office, now Dottie followed through a nearby door and couldn't help grinning when he noticed the cold sweat running down the man's forehead and neck. There was no trace of the smile visible however when the man turned around dot now. What the hell do you think you're doing telling people that I, Ichiha Sasuke, have been visiting the library? Naruto maybe held his voice down a little, but didn't lose any of its ferocity dot I was just do you want the whole world to know that the Ichiha clan now depends on Konoha's public services in order to get their jutsu's eye. Only have you ever thought about how it would look for Konoha if rumor got out that nearly all of the special Ichiha fires have become inaccessible. Have you well, no sir. But I just you only just what? Told that cute little book brain her in a. Think for a second man. Teammate or not, that girl is the biggest blabbermouth in the whole of Konoha I'm sorry sir. I didn't think it would do any harm. Sasuke seemed to calm down a little, with his left hand he held the bridge of his nose, as if in deep thoughts. Sigh whatever, it's fine. Now here's what we're gonna do. And flashback. Ever since then he was able to go there in his own form while still being treated as a person. Happy to at least have the luxury not to worry about that anymore, he now faced a bigger problem. After mastering the list he had set up for himself and getting himself a sparring partner with whom he could train his tojutsu, he now only needed to worry about one thing. Damn those freaking eyes. Now let's see what I have learned. First the obvious fact that they can copy just about any they see, Nin, Gen, Tai all the same. Sees through Gen Doc can predict time movements to a certain extent. When he reaches the three pupil stage, he'll be able to see through my clones. So basically everything gets kinda useless. No, that can't be everything, come one Naruto, think. Suddenly our hero found himself looking back over the bridge in wave country. The Sharingan isn't as strong as you make people believe. In our last fight I had Haku observe you. He described to me the inner workings of the technique. First you use your eye to scare me and put me under a very clever, making me think you can see the future. Then you made me perform the way you wanted to, only to slow me down at the last seal, so you can finish first. Very impressive indeed. However, I found a weakness, namely, you can't copy or hypnotize that which you cannot see. Well, that doesn't really help. I can fight what I can't see. Not yet anyway. Sai what about that fight with Haku, after all, he did suddenly develop his Sharingan there. Let's see, we had Haku jumping from mirror to mirror at an insane speed. Destroyed my clones before I even saw the needles flying. Asume might have been able to, but he still ended up looking pink that's it. Speed. As long as his body isn't able to react to whatever's coming at it, who cares what he can see. Humming to conclusions, Naruto headed for the Thai department to see what he could dig up on speed training. He ended up with a copy of super excellent speed training by someone calling himself the prideful green beast. The texts were kinda long and just plain weird sometimes, but the training in itself looked very thorough. He also liked the reviews it had on the back. The training schedule is utterly insane, and only suicidal stamina freaks would ever consider doing guys true men training tips. Imino Ruka, Academy Teacher. An excellent example of the old school training techniques taken to a new level, although somewhat extreme in certain cases. Tsuritobi Sandame Hokage. Completely ignoring all of the text and the fashion advice, I find this an excellent book if you can draw your own conclusion to the suggested training. Midorishi Anko, Anbu. Taking the book home, Naruto immediately went over the instructions on how to make his own weight seals. He however stayed far away from the suggested 50 pounds per leg. He tried that the first time and found himself pretty much glued to the ground. Whoever this green beast was, he had to be a monster. Which suited Naruto just perfectly fine. 9am. Hinoha, a little stone bridge on the west side of town. 12 days from the Chunin exam. Where is Kakashi sensei? Can't he just show already, well Naruto isn't here yet. For once I want to be able to train alone with Sasuke-kun. Kakashi has helped me a lot with my tie lately, and I want to show him how much I've improved. Where is that done this time? Two days ago Kakashi gave up some bullshit reason why he didn't show, now he's nowhere to be seen. I swear if that dope causes Kakashi to change his mind about the Chunin exam, I'm going to kill him. 
After several hours of waiting the sensei of Team 7 finally decided to show up in his usual fashion. Heyo, sorry I'm late. The dry cleaner had shrunk in my uniform and I had to get a new one at the Hokage Tower. Liar. The Kanoichi exclaimed. He's right actually, Sakura the blonde who had suddenly appeared in a similar fashion beneath the lantern pole Kakashi currently sat on. He didn't have any clothing on his torso which looked heavily sweated and was rubbing himself off with a towel. The person in charge of the uniforms didn't believe he was there when he showed up there in a regular t-shirt and khaki shorts. And where were you? The pink-haired ninja now demanded. Same dry cleaner. So I just took the liberty of taking our shrunken clothes to the orphanage. They just had gotten coke and ice cream, so a bunch of the toddlers puked on me, and I had to go back to my apartment to change. Liars. Both of you whatever. So Kakashi, you got us a decent mission while you were at the Hokage Tower Um no, I just got my uniform and then hurried to meet you guys. Hey Aruka. Got any C's left Naruto asked from inside the doorframe, entering the briefing room. Hi Naruto. Now you know you just can't have your pick of the litter when you're always the last team to come get missions. There was a brief poof of smoke, and suddenly the silver haired found himself clutching the back of his head in pain. Ah, what's a genin to do, he he. Winked to both his former academy teacher and the Hokage. We'll just take whatever you've got left, like always. Happy harvest time then. Farmers on the outskirts of town will be needing your help hauling in the crops for the next three days, reinforcements will be sent tomorrow tossing him the scroll. Three days of harvesting. Come on, Aruka. The Chunin exam is coming up in less than two weeks. I'm short on time for training already Naruto complained while reading the mission scroll. The rest of the team rarely said anything when receiving missions. They had learned when it came to that, Naruto was definitely the better negotiator. Finishing reading the scroll Naruto smiled. I don't guess there'll be a bonus for finishing early he fat chance of that occurring Naruto. Last year we sent two genin teams and they still needed an extra day. Yeah, let's just say, hypothetically, what if I did it in dot dot one day haha ha, Naruto, you can't be serious to do 15 field then, I'm sure your efforts would not go unrewarded, Naruto the Hokage interrupted. Dot, Yosh, I will do all of this in 24 hours, not including traveling time. Expect me back tomorrow at 16.00 hours. If I fail I will run as many laps around Kanoha as I am hours late. Kakashi, Iruka and Saratobi looked shocked and sweat dropped in certain fear as they heard Naruto making the bet with himself. This sounded scary indeed. Hey Doe, what the hell did you think you were doing back there the raven haired boy asked as the team was trekking across the road. Doing us all a favor, what did it look like? Idiot Naruto bit back. It looked like you were acting as a baka once again. Nobody can do all of this in one day the Kanoichi answered as she was looking over the list of crops. Didn't you hear Iruka, last time it took two teams four days. I heard. That means it would take one team 8 days or one person 24. C. There's no way we can do it in just one day. So many brains behind that big forehead, and no idea what to do with it. The blonde muttered. What I said so muck we're here, he interrupted. Taking his eye off the book, he pointed to a nearby farm. That's Farmer Takeda's place. You can start over there. If there's any trouble, I'll be inside. Figures all Jen and thought. As soon as they got some necessary instructions from the farmer, Naruto got to work creating 22 clones and threw himself at the work. It was as if a massive orange swarm had infested the field, and less than two hours later he left his teammates to fend for their own while he made his way to the next farm. From their position his teammates could just see carrots flying across the field. It wasn't until a few hours later that they finally caught up with him three fields further down the list. Naruto kept working at a devilish pace until nightfall, counting every single tomato, carrot and apple down the way. Spending the night at the Junpei farm the farmer didn't hide his admiration for the young shinobi's hard work, while mainly ignoring the blonde's teammates. They didn't exactly take well to this, but couldn't do much about it while they were guests at the man's house. Kakashi just stayed out of the conversations and read his weird book, occasionally throwing a look at Junpei's daughter Taki. Yunpei's mood wasn't put down when Naruto fell asleep at the table, since for a moment it seemed as if the little guy was going to eat more than he had hauled in. The farmer simply moved him to the couch while the rest of the team was sent to the hay attic. The next morning he was awoken by their host at first daylight. After enjoying a hearty bacon and eggs breakfast Naruto once again threw himself at the work as if possessed. The group of orange harvesters had grown in numbers by half its original amount to make up for the time he lost at night. Trying to do everything in 24 hours didn't just mean he had to increase work rate, but he also suffered a higher sleep-work time ratio. At noon, two hours before the deadline, several farmers had assembled near the last field. Bets were being made on the outcome, and several farmers asked the contracting ones where they could get one of those. When Naruto showed up he was breathing and sweating like an ox. Nonetheless, his eyes showed nothing but determination, and a crazy little grin showed on his face. Grabbing the two scythes he was carrying by his arms he once again formed his trademark dot. 
Then clones, all wielding dual scythes, shouted their war cries as they ran towards the wheat and started whirling over the field like miniature tornadoes. The rest of Naruto's troops now calmly arrived on the scene and started picking up the remains and tying it together at a slow but steady pace. Really Hokage, you can't seriously presume that even Naruto would be able to do all that in a single day. Now, now, Hiroka-san. You especially should know not to underestimate the little guy. Yes, but I mean, not even Guy or his team would have made such a statement. If Naruto says he can, we should at least give him the benefit of the doubt, don't we? Eh, I guess so. Time seemed to fly for the two men as they waited Team 7 while swapping stories about Naruto and Kinohimaru. Both wondered as well what the upcoming Chuenin exam would bring, though the old cage did show certain signs of worry when the subject got brought to the table. Haruka didn't ask and Siratobi didn't tell. There was no conclusive evidence for anything yet, so there was no need for the majority of Kanoha Shinobi to get paranoid. Paranoia usually only brought more harm than good. So instead the old man just joked on how Naruto would probably win the finals, using his no dot the memories of the technique spontaneously brought both men to scratch the ends of their nose. The knock on the door brought both men back from their trip down memory lane. Enter dot team 7 reporting a successful mission, Sir Naruto saluted with a foxy grin. Dot very well Siratobi laughed, nudging Aruka in his side now, would the three of you wait outside, will we have a word with your sensei. Dot Sasuke rolled his eyes before turning around for the door, while Sakura threw an angry look at Naruto, who in turn never knew since he chose that exact moment to turn the other way. Report. You idiot. Dot, what now? Ichiha Naruto responded with an annoyed voice. Dot, don't you realize you've probably totally disarrayed their schedule? Their schedule everybody knows that a few weeks before the exams, selected gen and are put on low-risk missions. Dot, oh no. So now we might get even more low-risk missions, Naruto. Sarcastically dramatized, waving his arms in the air to be sure he was overacting enough for even Sasuke to understand. Maybe tomorrow they'll have us picking mushrooms with the Everglade Pixies, or even worse washing the elderly he continued, making sure there was ample dread in his voice. Dope. Loser. The two threw each other one last look of disgust, before finally deciding to ignore each other. Several minutes later their sensei came through the door and told them they could go in before taking his leave. Ah yes, Team 7, my apologies for the wait. There were some important matters I needed to discuss with your sensei. Hmm, where were we again? Oh yes, congratulations on a job well done. Sasuke, Sakura, here are your checks he said, handing them both their respective envelopes, and Naruto, here's your part. Taking over the sealed container, the blonde was surprised by its weight. The Hokage noticed the look of surprise on his face and just gave him a silent nod. After their debriefing all teammates went their separate ways. Naruto made sure he was alone before taking a look at his paycheck. Oh my dot dot oh man. Ha ho ho. So sweet. This must be nice, 22 days of pay. I love that old man. And the green beast wasn't kidding when he said hard work does not go unrewarded. These things are killing me though he thought, shaking both of his legs a little, and I gotta add another 5 pounds tomorrow. After the logical visit to the bank, making sure he asked for his receipt as proof of the transaction, the next stop was of course at Chiraku's. He was happy to see Aruka was waiting there for him as well, as he had been too distracted to ask him out for Raymond. The fact that he wasn't really hungry since Miss Tanaka wouldn't let him go until he finished half the pumpkin pie she had made hadn't helped either. Judging by the enormous smile on the old chief's face, he had already heard the news. So, I hear you finally started working the way you have been eating all these years. That's supposed to be classified information, old man. Uti sorry Naruto, nothing personal, just business Aruka turned around on his chair, grinning over a steaming hot bowl of a rare beef chicken ramen mix. Damn crooked shinobus that, soon to be broken again Jen and muttered. Yeah yeah, whatever. Now hurry up with the money. The sweet, sweet money. Muhaha. Hahaha <laughs> Hachira seemed to be enjoying his role of evil, money-loving Raymon Don a little too much for sanity's sake, when Naruto got presented with a real bill, though he suddenly realized he might not have been playing much at all. Relieved of nearly a third of his sudden riches, the young genin sat down in conversation with his friends. When Aruka finished his bowl both shinobi left Ichira's company and took a digestive stroll through Konoha. So, Naruto. I take it that the chakra exercise I showed you has paid off. Are you kidding me? I couldn't have possibly done the last mission without all that extra control I gained. Great. That's great. Anything else you've learned lately besides the fact that Ichiha is a sore loser? You know, a little this, a little that. Hahaha. <laughs> You sure you just haven't been acting like a sore winner the jokes. He, well, yes and no. But come on, who wouldn't like to rub it in that guy's face I know what you mean. Just don't overdo it. You know how important it is to be able to depend on your teammates. Hi, hi. I know. It's just that sometimes those two piss me off so much I'd just like to shove kunai up there okay, okay, I get the point. 
Oh well, guess I better start preparing for tomorrow's class. Later Naruto, and stay out of trouble. Later Iruka. Stupid dope, with his stupid shitload of chakra. Nobody should be able to pull off the crap he did today. And why won't Kakashi teach me that cage bunshin technique when Naruto just about uses it every hour of the day? It's a level technique, you'll learn when you're dot bullshit. Idiots always get special favors. He's not even supposed to be graduated yet, and now he's running on the village wall. God damn it, does he think he can get away with anything he wants? I'll show him. I'll show him all once I've developed my third pinwheel. And once I've done that, I'll show Itachi what it means to betray the Ichiha clan. Sasuke launched a massive combination of kicks and blows on the wooden dummies in his personal training area, finishing with a fire that left the majority of his opponents smoldering in flames. Oh great going genius. Now I'll have to replace these things the raven-haired boy sighed before returning to the confines of his empty mansion, bending himself over the family scrolls. Sakura had been bathing for the last hour, trying to scrub all the dirt from her, and making sure that any possible bugs that might still be on her, were definitely drowned. On one hand she had been glad that Naruto had left her and Sasuke alone for the greater part of the past days. The downside was that working in the dirt, pulling out carrots, wasn't exactly the most romantic alone time she could have gotten. Even sleeping so close beside her crush in that attic had lost its attractiveness when several big spiders had started crawling up her legs. So many things just hadn't been going her way the past weeks. Naruto giving her lip, Sasuke bad-mouthing her abilities as a kanoichi, the store had stopped selling her shampoo, and even Kazumo had been acting differently lately. Her favorite library hadn't even looked surprised when she had told him Naruto fooled him by pretending to be Sasuke. And now she couldn't even vent her frustration on her least favorite teammate anymore. Beating those animated dummies just didn't have the same satisfying effect. Naruto was currently training his abs, biceps and chakra control, by sticking to a stone ceiling with his fingertips and raising his legs while flurring the chakra drill on and off the beat on his Walkman. He only wore one earpiece so he could stay aware of his surroundings. The other one was tucked away in his jacket with a sound muffler on it. Right now his main problem wasn't hiding the sound from his music but preventing his teammates from hearing his groans. He was now up to 60 pounds per leg and definitely wouldn't mind if Kakashi came in early today. Which was just a nice way to say an hour or two less late. The technique had been coming along nicely the last few days. Yesterday he was finally able to raise it fast enough to cut a clean inch deep hole through wood in the time it took a punch to connect. He thought about the results it should have on flesh and didn't know whether to be pleased or disgusted by the no doubt bloody he had created. Another inconvenient consequence was the inability to practice the technique in combat with an actual opponent. Sure he could try it out on Ichiha and call it a training accident, but he figured no one would take kindly to him brutally maiming his teammate for life. Nah, Sasuke-kun, do you think Naruto's ever gonna act normal again there, was only a small grunt from her teammate in reply. The Kanoichi continued talking as if she understood whatever he meant perfectly though. I know, if he keeps acting like he does now we'll consider it normal soon enough. But he's become such a nonsense lately. Always acting like he's so big and righteous all the time. And then when there are other people around he acts like there's nothing going on. He's always been so annoying and now he's twice as bad. Sometimes I think back to wave country and just wish you'd have let him die. Suddenly the girl felt herself pushed to the floor by her teammate, as a piercing screech accompanied by the loud shouting of someone nearby echoed through the air, followed by a splash. When silence returned to their surroundings, Sasuke let go of his teammate and cautiously walked over to the far side of the bridge. Oh. What are you doing there I was streaming to practice my chakra control under the bridge until some bitch distracted me enough to lose focus a heavy breathing and once again nearly half-naked Naruto answered. Yubaka. Have you been training underneath us all the past day Sasuke suddenly halted his question as he saw his words reach nothing but smoke and air. You the raven-haired boy heard behind him. Turning around he saw both his teammates trembling, one in anger, one in fear. Naruto. I I didn't. Dot, dot, I did run he ordered her in a primal voice, pointing to the road behind her. Seeing the pure look of anger on his face, she knew there was no room for arguments or apologies, so she just grabbed herself up as fast as she could and got herself out of there like a gazelle that just spotted a leopard. Turning his attention back to the blonde, Sasuke figured he was trying to calm himself down using the old counting back from 10 trick. When he reached 5 however the boy was shocked to see his teammate pull out a kunai, and before he could react the blonde hurled it in the direction of the running Kinoichi. On three Kakashi suddenly appeared between the two and seemed to effortlessly intercept the flying projectile without even taking his eye off his book. The blonde frowned but kept counting. At one Sasuke could only make out a single seal and a faint whispered Kairushin Kawarimi no. 
As Naruto's form went up in smoke he looked back at the fleeing girl just in time to see the blonde appear less than a yard in front of her and deliver a mean punch right in her gut. Sakura doubled over in pain, clutching her stomach, trying to gasp for breath. She then felt, more than saw, Naruto bending closer before whispering in her ear. Stupid, shallow, lying, ungrateful fangirl bitch. I'd shove a kunai up your spine if I didn't know any better. With it he just walked back towards the bridge. When he passed Kakashi, he casually asked him to return his kunai. Why? So you can try to kill another one of your teammates, hey? Unlike some people here, I don't wish death upon my team members. No matter how much I dislike them. Really. Sure didn't look like that just a few seconds ago. Then. Maybe you should look underneath the underneath, like you like to put it yourself, Sharingan Kakashi Naruto responded Dodd and what would I find there, Naruto kun the instructor smiled sarcastically Dodd only the fact that anybody with some decent depth perception would have noticed that my arc was way too high and by the time it reached her, it should have been off by a yard to the left. The silver haired seemed to ponder upon this for a moment before sending Naruto off to Sasuke. Meanwhile Kakashi went to check up on Sakura who was leaning against a tree for support. Great going dope, that stunt might have just cost us our tickets to the Chunin exam. Shut up nonsense, was his only reply as he turned around to face the two remaining members of his team. When Kakashi arrived he just grunted follow me and headed to the outskirts of town. All three genin did so in silence. After 10 minutes they finally seemed to have reached their destination. Everyone except them suddenly came to an involuntary halt as they read the sign on the house. He's got to be he can't be what the you guys coming or what Kakashi told more then asked them as he entered Wulong's hot baths. The lazy-eyed ninja must have been a regular at the place since the owner knew him by name and he was able to give him some lip without being thrown out when the man made an odd comment about his guests and the fact that they had asked for a single group dressing room. Once they had all entered he locked the door. Now, Strip. The genin just looked at him and each other funny. What? You think I'm kidding? I said Strip, now get to it there wasn't a trace of humor on the man's face. He just stood there arms crossed, raised in his full posture with his normally lazy eye now looking awfully serious. This isn't good. I probably shouldn't have made fun of that eye patch. Now think Naruto, think. Okay mental checklist. A. Kakashi's a pervert. B. He asked us to get ready C. One of you is a girl. D. This is really awkward. O. And E. We hate each other. Okay, since there's not much input from those two let's go with D for now. Them, Kakashi, this is really awkward. What is? Don't tell me that despite apparently wearing the same clothes every day you've never taken them off. Now get out of them. That's an order. What about Sakura Sasuke now offered? I think Naruto would agree if I said Kanoichi are to be treated as complete equals in the ninja world. Shit. I was afraid he'd say that. Come on, there's got to be something I'm missing. I know there is. Hmm, Sakura is being mighty creative just standing there looking uncomfortable. Up to me again, I guess. Sure. They're just as likely to stick a kunai in your throat as anybody else. See? Now get to it the ordered in an intimidating way. Find the stubborn blonde team boldly stated, sure that the point of this whole experience wasn't to see each other in another way from a physical point of view. Come on, come on. What am I missing here? Bathhouse, dressing room, clothes hangers, his eyes scanned the room as he got rid of the t-shirt. Towels. There's got to be towels around here somewhere. His eyes darted across the room as he slowly bent down to remove his sandals. There wasn't a trace of any of the white fluffy cotton items anywhere. Not on the racks on the right behind Sasuke, the bench or even the inch open closet in the wall to Sakura's left. Jinjutsu. Has to be dot Motherhiller. He knows I'm crap at that. He sighed in annoyance as he finally dropped his pants and picked them back up from the floor. Those two, Naruto he said, motioning to his black boxer shorts. Like hell, I'm going to be the only person in the room. The two got engaged in a small staring contest until Kakashi broke the silence. Fair enough. You too, get to it. Dot. As soon as he had broken eye contact Naruto took advantage of his distraction to form his hands in the rat seal underneath his folded clothes. Okay, here goes nothing. Kai. Nothing. He tried again, concentrating on several parts of the room. Still nothing. Twenty consecutive tries didn't even reveal a hint of the desired items. Shit. Not that either huh. Damn it, I'm running out of options here. He was running out of time as well. As soon as their sensei took out what he claimed were their entrance tickets to the Chunin exam and threatened to bring them in real close proximity to the small fire he had concentrated on the tip of his finger, the Achiha's clothes practically went flying across the room. At least Sakura seemed to brighten up at the occurrence. Naruto just let out an amused sigh at the sight of his rival in old-fashioned, little boyish baby blue underpants. All eyes were now on her. Sasu clenched his fists, obviously resisting the urge to personally rip her clothes off her. Slowly she dropped on her knee and started untying her shoelaces. 
her hands were shaking a little, and it was clear she had imagined her first time getting ready with the object of her affection in a totally different manner. After she had carefully put away her combat boots, she started picking open the buttons on her red Chinese style dress one by one. As she went to one of the clothes hangers on Sasuke's side, Naruto caught the little unnatural motion of her hand when she opted to touch the towel rack. But then her face betrayed disappointment. So, she finally decided to join us. About freaking time she realized that just looking all sad and ashamed wasn't going to work here. So now what? No, nothing in plain sight, no more clothes and almost out of time. You have until noon to each get one bell. When the time's up and you haven't got one, it's back to the academy for you. Nah the blonde tried shaking the ridiculous thought out of his head, but for some reason it wouldn't leave. No really, come on. We know he's a perv, but that would be plain stupid. It's idiotic. It's sadistic. It's sarcastic. It's him. God damn it, I hate you Kakashi. You stinking lazy pervert. Meanwhile Sakura was now standing back next to Naruto. What are you looking at she bit at Naruto when she noticed his gaze. Don't flatter yourself, the overkill on pink would stop any man from further ideas. I was just noticing you finally started eating and working out. He retorted, putting his eyes back in front. Whatever, pervert she said. I can hear you're all done. Now lose the rest of it. Erm, Kakashi what is it now, Naruto the man asked, obviously losing his patience. You wouldn't be holding two towels behind your back, would you? An upward motion made its way across the teacher's face mask, one that all his students had learned to comprehend as an ill omen. No. The gen and sweat dropped. I figured it was getting old. However, reaching behind his back, he suddenly conjured up one giant beach towel. Er, can we vote on this? No. A general disappointed muttering was heard. One towel. One hour. Two rules. No weapons and no property damage. That includes completely filling the room up to the ceiling with cage bunchen. Weak flooring, he illustrated by shifting his weight on the floor, making the wood creak. Round 1. Fight. Sorry, we just got Tekken 5. Sasuke didn't waste any time, and immediately opened up with a forward jumping kick. Kakashi easily caught the offending leg with his left hand, the Achiha however, twisted his body with the captured leg as a rotating axis, and now brought down his right leg towards his teacher's head. Before he could connect however the boy had already been thrown across the room, ending in a crouched position on the wall. During Sasuke's brief flight, Naruto had already filled in his position on the offensive front. He started with a leg sweep, which Kakashi easily sidestepped and rewarded with a snap of the towel to the blonde's chest. Naruto's offense wasn't so easily stopped however, and he charged in once more, this time aiming for the man's abdomen. The cotton cloth intercepted his fist, and Kakashi sent him sailing towards Sakura. As the two ended up on the floor in a somewhat embarrassing but mostly annoying position for them, Sasuke once again went flying over their heads, this time going with his extended version of a roundhouse kick. The fight went on like that with Jenin flying through the room for about half an hour. It was getting clear that this approach was getting them nowhere. Naruto had never been much of a close quarter fighter, as far as his teammates knew anyway. Sasuke obviously was stealing the show again with his strange twisting and turning combat style. Most amazing might have still been Sakura however, who for once actually seemed involved in the straight tie show-off between the four. Wait a second. We're all just straight on attacking. And for nothing but one stupid oversized towel he wants us to share. There's got to be more to it. Something that'll get us all what we want. And we definitely don't want to be standing to each other. Stupid pervert. Wouldn't surprise me if he got this from one of those disgusting orange books. Damn it, teamwork it is then besides, I need the credit. Yo Sakura, why don't you get back to doing what you did best for a moment she threw him a dirty look as if saying, what's that supposed to mean but when he suddenly changed his appearance into hers, she nodded her head in understanding. Sasuke come. You look so great sticking to the walls he. Now said, utterly disgusted with himself. The raven haired boy just nodded, performed henge, and now approached their teacher in a more vertical manner. Kakashi looked unfazed as he was attacked by a sudden horde of pink girls. Two jumped at him from the side, a simple fast wave from the towel revealed they were bunching. There were still five others though. The one in the back had to be Sakura, he figured the angriest looking one on the wall to be Sasuke. That just left Naruto. A wide arsing kick as a response to the joint triple attack the combined Sakuras in front of him, revealed the left one to be the only solid one. As he came to a halt colliding with the door and the smoke of the dispelled henge, there was a grin visible on his face. What? Are you smiling about, Naruto game over Kakashi sensei. A sudden orange streak moved across the room, from Kakashi's right into Naruto's hand. Cage Bunshin hiding in the regular Bunshin. Ki, please. He held out his other hand, as he waved with a weird book. He quickly patted his left rear pocket to confirm Naruto was actually holding the real deal. When he found nothing, he was quick to give in to the Genin's demands. Sure, sure, just don't damage it. Here he said hurriedly, throwing him the key to the dressing room. 
Now, put it gently on the floor and walk away slowly. Sorry, sensei, but you know I have to try it out first. He grinned, getting up and turning to face the door. The rest of the team swore he was moving so slowly they could actually see time fly by. Most of them didn't mind though. When the click of the lock meeting key was finally heard and Naruto was reassured, Kakashi suddenly moved so fast the blonde didn't even notice his bargaining chip escaped his hand until he turned around and saw the two reunited in a tight embrace. Leaving the disturbing scene behind him for what it was he opened the door and called for the owner to bring them three extra towels. When all four members of Team 7 finally made it into the hot spring, Kakashi however still wasn't wearing his most worry-free face. Now, will one of you tell me why my subordinates recklessly attack each other outside sparring matches? None of the three seemed eager to answer. Naruto knew he hadn't handled the situation the politically correct way, but since when did anybody on Team 7 care about that Sakura, realized that saying you wish one teammate was dead to another one wasn't exactly the smartest thing to do. Sasuke on the other hand, only worried about how this would affect his chances at getting in the Chunin exam. He needed to get in. He had Tommy Chunin. He was already behind his brother. No one's talking, huh? Fine. I guess I can always make you guys walk home in that towel. And then we'll have the next month and a half to work on teamwork while the rest of the genin take the exam. That also means that there will be more than enough D-rank missions for us to go around for the next six months. No 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 no. We can't have that. I need to get into the Chunin exam now, you're not me over after all that training, Kakashi. Shouldn't have said anything about that death wish should earlier to him. Okay, okay Naruto started, seeing there was no help from his teammates. Haruno opened her big mouth, something incredibly stupid flew out, and I overreacted. Dotum. So, Sakura, what was it exactly that escaped your mouth I, I it doesn't matter. And I don't want to hear it again. Surely Naruto, if there is a problem in the team, especially this close to the exam, I should be aware. It's not a problem. It won't jeopardize teamwork, I think we showed that just now. Actually I saw very little team spirit back in there. Nani Naruto. Questioned his teacher's judgment. Sakura should have never had to show her powers in front of us in the first place. Then, what about treating Kinoichi as complete equals? How about treating this one as a teammate who you have to keep into account? I sure as hell didn't hear her complain. Besides, I figured this was another one of your strange, twisted, and perverted team building exercises. Naruto explained himself, hoping to divert the attention long enough to cash in their exam entrance tickets. Bakashi in truth was just stressed out from dealing with his idiotic shallow and selfish genin team. He could actually use the minimum six-day vacation. Naruto and Sasuke seemed capable enough to survive the first two parts of the exam. Sakura could hold them back a little, but maybe that was necessary. Otherwise the other two would probably rush into any opponent without thinking. And if the experience didn't kill them it would only bring them out stronger. They'd need to be strong. If Arachima were indeed to attack soon, they would need to be as strong as they could. The snake would probably bring some friends. Maybe the sands, things had become pretty unstable in the desert, with the daimyo cutting their budget. Or the newly erected sound, but they doubted such a small, newly erected village, would dare face the might of Kanoha. Anyway, the exam was as good an opportunity as any to gauge his team's strength. Besides, he might as well give them home advantage while he could. Things had been exciting for a while there, but now Naruto was able to relax. Admittedly he had been a little surprised when Kakashi finally decided he'd allow him to participate in the Chunin exam. Walking through the village, he suddenly found himself being followed by a strange rectangle-shaped rock with two holes in a dot Konohamaru, what have I told you about that disguise? I swear if you use that thing again I'm not gonna play with you, anymore. A large explosion went off on the street, and three coughing little kids appeared. KOF, sorry leader. Still too much gunpowder you didn't emerge from the smoke. Leader, would you still play ninja with us now? Mogi pleaded, her face still black as cold. Autumn, I don't know. I should be training for the Chunin exam and you guys didn't do what I asked. Ne, Naruto, you're in the Chunin exam now. Kanohamaru shouted. Hell yeah. I'm so gonna beat you to becoming Hokage now. Kanohamaru. No way. I'll become Hokage before you leave and make Jown and oh yeah yeah then show me what you got kids the blonde grinned, initiating their little playtime. Naruto rarely had any playtime when he was their age. Spending time with the Konohamaru Corps was his little way of catching up. Heh, playing ninja. Who knows how much better he would have been able to do at the academy if he just had someone to play such a stupid little game with. Half an hour into their recreation Konohamaru suddenly bumped into someone. The guy in a black jumpsuit, wearing face paint, violently pulled him up by his collar. You little runt, watch where you're going. Sorry, it was an accident. Maybe I should give you a little accident of your own, so it won't happen again. Hey. Get your hands off that kid, ha. Why should I do such a thing? Leaf Nin Naruto sighed as if in disappointment, you just had to ask, huh? Oh well, Konohamaru went easy on him. Remember, he's a guest here. The little academy student had a look of panic and disbelief on him. 
Was his leader just gonna idly stand by and watch as he was gonna get beaten up by the Sandman? Then for an instant it seemed as if something shifted when the scared Genin suddenly grinned. Like a cat Konohamaru twisted his body so that his feet came within kicking distance to the man's face. The Sand Nin reacted however, pulling his face back and dropping the arm in which he held the little kid. This was exactly what the boy had been counting on, as now he was getting propelled to arm's reach of the guy's family heirlooms. Hitting the man square in the jackpot he managed to get free of his assaulter and ran towards Naruto's side. Hiding behind his leader's leg he stuck his tongue out towards the visitor. Konohamaru, go back to Mogi and Yudin he said, motioning the child back, then shifting his gaze back to their guest. Goddamn, little motherfa, shit. Get back here yo he was just an academy student, imagine what I would do to you, not to mention the Anbu. He, you're bluffing the youngster said, trying to look triumphant while still clutching his balls, making it quite impossible. Maybe. But since you just lost to an 8 year old, do you think I really need to? You could always check with my teammate he said, well pointing to the tree next to the sand nin. Unlike. Your child molesting teammate, we'd like to welcome you to Kanoha said a Sasu clone, who appeared right beside the redeed who had been hiding in a tree. Only a proof was heard in reply, as a spike of sand destroyed the clone, going straight through his heart. Another proof and Sasu emerged back right next to his teammate. The red head then simply disappeared in a mass of swirling sand to reappear between his two fellow sand nin. Leaf Nin, what is your name? The redeed asked, looking the clone in his eyes. Who's asking my name is Gara. Gara of the desert. Ichiha Sasuke. You have the same eyes as me, Ichiha. I think I'll make you my prey. Kenkuro, Tamari, let's go. He squinted his eyes before turning around to leave. What the that ain't right? Idiot is impressed by a clone. What is it with that guy? I mean, sure, I make a pretty good clone, but come on. He's not even here, and he still gets all the attention. You have to admit, though. I do look fantastic. He threw the clone with a raised eyebrow. Why don't you go do whatever's on your piece of my mind? Sweet, field trip. The clone smiled before he jumped out of sight. Naruto had to admit the wind guy was good though. San just flew out of that big gourd on his back. No hand seals or anything. Maybe it was some strange blood limit from the sand. He pondered over it as he walked back to the Konohamaru core. Hey leader, how did you do that do what, Konohamaru he smiled dot you know. Teleport me away and make me kick that guy's ass dot oh, simple cage bunshin, henge and kawarimi, no combo. Besides the last two you should know that from the academy dot sorry leader. And thank you for saving me. You're welcome, kid. Now I still have tons of stuff to do, so I gotta go. Later, guys. By leader all. The kids yelled with a sad face. Before he could meet up with Hinata and tell her the good news, there was one more thing the blonde really needed to do. Making sure he wasn't followed, he sneaked back under the bridge where his team always met up. Crawling against the stone surface, he was suddenly amazed by a deep, smooth 5 inch gap that ran through the stone over half a yard. Lucky for him he had been holding his arm a good two foot away from the stones, otherwise the thing would have probably collapsed on top of him. The long line was probably caused by the fact that he hadn't held his hand still, when he was surprised by the sudden chakra outburst, and out of reflex, had pointed the beam away from him. Earlier he hadn't had the chance to inspect the damage he had caused. He hadn't felt like it very much either, he just wanted to break the bitch's nose. If Kakashi had not interfered he would have probably done so as well, and might have continued throwing his fist in her face, until he had reached her brain. Stupid bitch, wishing he were dead. He had probably saved her life dozens of times already, and this was the thanks he got. If he'd known there was about to erupt a three-foot-long lance of purple chakra from his hand, he might have pushed it completely through the bridge, instead releasing his other hand and falling down the water. No no no, that isn't any way to think of your teammates, Naruto. Overreacting again. They might be nonsense, but they're Leaf Nin all the same. Besides, it's only Sakura. Stupid bitch doesn't even know what she's saying half of the time. Probably trying to impress Asuke by talking shit about me. Forget about her. She's a no-talent klutz with shit for brains. Probably just pissed I'm out showing her stupid crush now. Forgetting about Pinky, Naruto once again focused on the things at hand. Why did all those cool new techniques, if he could call them that, only happen when he was pissed off? Must be something different about the way he molds chakra then. So many new things have been happening recently. First the Hokage telling him he might have a bloodline and Hinata's dad plainly stating he was constantly mixing large amounts of demon chakra with his own. Not to mention all the fire he had had to learn, plus the Akamamika's style he had to practice in secret. So many things to learn, figure out or play with, and so little time to actually do them. The Chunin exam hadn't even started yet, and he was already looking forward to the end of it. Thought first things first though, he figured as he left the scene. There were still some hours left to train before held meet up with Hinata later today. Trying to figure out any strange ways in how his chakra twisted when he got mad was something he could think about later. 
Right now he had a few laps around the village to finish. Meanwhile a pink-haired Kanoichi was working out her frustrations on a bunch of animated training dummies. This was her 17th encounter with them today, and she had developed quite some skills at taking them out over the past few weeks. After taking out the last one she was surprised and rewarded by a sudden clapping. Turning around she saw her sensei sitting on one of the lower tree branches. Very well, Sakura. I see you have improved quite a bit since you first started here he said, jumping down to ground level. Thank you, Kakashi sensei. But I did not come here today to check up on your progress he said with a serious voice whilst walking towards her. Oh. Then what can I do for you, sensei you can start by explaining what all the ruckus between you and Naruto was about. Shame. And fear crept across the girl's face. She had truly hoped their instructor had forgotten about the incident, especially since he had already allowed them to enter the Chunin exam. I'm waiting, Sakura. I, I said something stupid. I figured that out myself already. Right now I want to know how bad it really was. It was obvious Naruto didn't want me to know, so now I come to ask you. I, dot, dot. I didn't mean to, I didn't even know he was there, the young Jenin murmured. Well, you did and he was. Now tell me. I'm sure it can't be that bad. I, I told Sasuke that I wish Naruto was. Dot, dot, dead. Kakashi took a deep breath and gave her a serious look before happily saying see, that wasn't so hard, now was it she just stood there, surprise written all over her face. Demo, Kakashi Sakura, people say stupid things all the time. The question now is, what are going to do about it? We both know you didn't mean what you said. You and Naruto might be having some issues lately, but it's not like you want to kill each other, right no she quietly said, her eyes still downward. Good. Now go apologize to him. It's best for you all to have things resolved before the Chunin exam. Nani. Why do I have to apologize? You wished him death first, right? Demo, no buts. I want you and Naruto to get your stuff resolved, and that ice in order the tall teacher said before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Scientists say a human being normally uses about 10 of the total capacity of his brain. Imagine you are a small piece of your mind. A floating thought. A recipe for chicken or an idea for mowing your grass faster. Maybe you are just the part that likes Raymond or the smell of vanilla. Then all of a sudden, you are given a body of your own and access to the part of the mind that actually allows you to think. A body, the freedom to think and the ability to look at the real world. In return, all you have to do is make the body do whatever the other part tells you to. To a complete human it might sound like a bad deal. But for a tiny little thought it's like you're ripping off the other party. Got all that? Good. Welcome to the life of a cage bunshin. Now this particular cage bunshin's essence of being was easily put as. Who the hell are these people? It was a question that was actually laying unused in Naruto's mind at the moment of the clone's creation. Naruto himself had been too busy thinking of protecting Kinohimaru and on playing his bluff of his reinforcement to give that question any immediate thought and afterwards gave it little thought. Perhaps this had been due to the clone using it all to the time and doing nothing else. San Nin, redhead, blonde girl with a huge fan fan and a skirt that left little to the imagination, nonsense in a stupid kitty looking jumpsuit with fake pointy ears, Gara of the desert, Tenmari, Kankuro dot that was easy now he wondered, what did he really know about them? Gara, what did he mean exactly with the same eyes or thinking of making me his prey? He couldn't have been a clone as well, right? It would be possible the way he teleported a sand clone user. Nah, there's no way he should know I'm a clone. We didn't use hand seals to make me. Sasuke's eyes. Does he have the Sharingan? Nah, come on. There hasn't been a single Ichiha missing Nin loss for more than a week since the clan's independence. And before that they were slaves to the Hyuga's bloodline protectionism. Sasuke and Kakashi should be the only two people left. Unless there's someone else like Kakashi. But then it should be active all the time, right? For a moment the clone went on a sidetrack, thinking why there weren't any other people like Kakashi. There must have been a lot of eyes available right after the Ichiha massacre. Yao will think at least someone must have figured not to let them all go to waste. So eliminating the thought that they were auctioned off to the highest bidder or that Gara carried a collection of bloodline body parts in that gourd, he still knew nothing about the trio that could be useful. Seeing his self-proclaimed possible hunter leave, he decided it might be best to stalk the party for a while. After all prey is best off knowing its predator, that way it can prevent getting caught by its tactics, and ending up as fertilizer. Using his knowledge of the surrounding to his advantage, he took to the trees and disappeared in the canopy. As the clone followed the group of sand nin, jumping from tree to tree as a squirrel, walking around as a dog or hopping rooftops in cat form, something that had been nagging at him suddenly clicked. For being foreign to the village the trio knew its way around pretty well. Sometimes one or two of them would awe in front of a local monument or architectural building, but never was there any doubt in their next turn. Right now they were heading in the direction of the stadium. Once they reached it the three quickly made their way to the top, walking on the walls of the building. The bunch and stayed on their blind side before doing the same and closed into the hearing range posing as a street cat. 
So, this is where it will all begin Kankuro asked rhetorically. Gara, would you be alright the redhead didn't say anything at first. Then there was a twitch in his eye, and he held his hand up to the kanji on his forehead. Yes. Please be careful Gara. Once you transform, your shield will be deactivated. He'll be fine. Once he transforms nothing can stop Gara. Leaf won't even know what hit him. Shield, transform, unstoppable. They make him sound like he's more than just an average genin. Hmm, maybe their own version of Sasuke. No wonder he was so interested in me, especially if their main targets will be Leaf Nins. They seem to know more about the exam than us as well. Might be Kakashi's fault, we should ask Kanata what she knows later. Suddenly the wind shifted and in another whirl of sand a wind country appeared beside the team. The left face of his face was half covered by a loose cloth or bandage that hung down from behind his forehead, protector. Gara, Tenmari, Kankuro. What are you three doing here? You should know better than to draw such attention to yourselves. We thought it useful to get a better understanding of the surroundings, so be wild be prepared as best as possible when watch your mouth, Tenmari. Besides the cage, there might not be a single leaf nin that can pose a threat to Gara, but the Anbu of the leaf do not lack in stealth. One wrong word and everything might be compromised. Anada and Naruto had been training furiously for the past hour. Ever since Naruto had let her in on the new Tojutsu style he wanted to practice with her, he didn't put up with Anada holding anything back. He had not told her all the details of the style, like its name or the fact that he was copying it from his teammate, but she knew he wanted to keep it a secret until the exams, especially from his teammates. So she now fights Naruto with her Byakugan constantly activated to watch out for spectators. This was both beneficial to her stamina, chakra control and her skills with the family heritage. Though it limited the use of her skills and Tai due to the inability to give him her full attention. Naruto himself wasn't slacking off either. At every moment during their sparring he had a minimum of 8 clones actively guarding and patrolling their practice area, while another two observed both, anxiously making notes in two small red books. The one observing Hinata had the more difficult task of analyzing and understanding the Jayuikan style, while taking note of any possible errors in the blue-haired girl's personal use of the style. This way both parties got something out of the deal. While the other clone that observed Naruto had a little different job. He and his creator were in constant telepathic contact, the clone going over a list of moves and combinations Naruto was to execute, while simultaneously writing down and telling him of any flaws in his execution. Despite both combatants' invisible strains of mental activity, any possible observer would be impressed by the genin's techniques and acrobatic movements. Suddenly the Hayuga heiress's eyes caught something a few dozen yards behind the tree line. Naruto I know he winked, dropping his stance, and smoothly returning to his old street fighting style. It is one of your teammates, shouldn't you say something to her Hinata? Asked between breaths as she launched into a combination of punches, kicks and a sweep that got her crush hitting the ground very unceremoniously. She suppressed a small giggle as she knew he was faking the sudden weakness and pulling it all off very convincingly. We had a little disagreement, this morning he avoided the answer flipping to his feet. Things might get ugly if she comes. I'd prefer to avoid the trouble if possible. Since when do you try to stay out of trouble she teased right before striking his left shoulder and closing off one of his. Oh. And since when did you get so feisty the blonde whined with a laugh to suppress the pain. The girl just smiled. A few days ago she was finally able to hide her blushing to an extent, but the little red shade that did get through to her cheeks now gave her a somewhat naughty look. Naruto, Hinata, a pink-haired Kinoichi approached them from behind the trees. Hello Sakura Hinata smiled. Haruno it was more a sigh than a greeting from the blonde. Naruto. Can we talk? He eyed the girl for a second before answering. Sure. Poking Hinata in her side he winked, hey, this ain't over yet. I'll see you in a minute before hopping off into the trees. Halting on a thick nearby branch he turned towards his teammate. Talk. Naruto I I'm sorry. I did you mean it he asked, eyes like cold blue steel. I a, of course I mean it. I meant, did you mean it when you said you sometimes wish I was dead the only emotion that was hearable in his voice was the fact that he was trying not to shout. I or are you still trying to impress Sasuke by talking me down no I I you're not. Hmm. Well, good for you, I guess he didn't hide his surprise, but didn't lose any of his confidence as he leaned relaxed back to the tree trunk. Maybe I was. Sai Naruto, I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. I was just you were just being you. Yeah okay maybe I overreacted. Naruto. You think we can just, you know, get back to normal to each other no the answer came quick, flat and short, I know what normal you mean, and you should have realized a long time ago I didn't particularly like that treatment. Sakura didn't answer. She had realized her treatment towards her teammate hadn't always been very just. That didn't mean she liked apologizing to this new Naruto however. It wasn't like he was being very friendly, himself. The blonde let out another deep breath before answering. 
whatever, let's just enter the Chunin exam with a clean slate, we'll see how we get along afterwards. His teammate considered this for a moment, before agreeing to the terms and being back on her way, leaving him and Hinata alone once again. Meanwhile a single cage Bunshin was experiencing feelings of annoyance, amusement and intrigue concerning a certain San Nin. Already several flower pots had met their demise when they had fallen from a second story window and crashed onto a shield of sand. At a certain point during its quest the clone had impersonated two young children on kunai practice, only to have the wooden, blunt projectiles intercepted and returned at full speed. Only their clever, clumsy-looking reaction had saved him and his partner from exposing themselves then. Yet it was worth it just to know that Gara's shield wasn't just a defense. Something else that bothered him was the fact that the shield seemed to respond to threats autonomously. Very strange indeed. A technique that so advanced would require a huge constant amount of chakra, even if it was a bloodline, yet the clone couldn't detect him using any at all. Only one thing was certain, this guy definitely wasn't a regular genin.